Contents Podcast with Michael and Adam and Robbie. We're back from Vegas. It is a shithole that we live in. I fucking hate this place. It's so cold. There's 18 feet of snow, and it's going to be negative 12 degrees. I called my dad on Monday. I was like, why do people live here? He was like, "Don't, uh, yeah, I'm with you on this one. <laughs> Let's not live here anymore. Mike, hit me up about the tips for living in Vegas. It's better. You can add me. At, at me on at all your bases. Send me a DM. <laughs> tell me about all of the better things, including the fact that it was 60 degrees and sunny the entire time that we were there, and you can see the mountains. People were complaining about being cold at 45. Yeah, yeah. We're, and I'm good with that. That's, even at, that's even a new at night, cold. it was nice. like 50. Yeah, nice sweatshirt the day, weather. it was like 60. Nice sweatshirt weather. I forgot what 60 felt like. In yep. the sun, no less. Yeah. We don't usually get the sun here in the winter. We <laughs> it get was it sunny about one today. day a week. It was yeah, that made it worse. It was our one day. Made it sloppy. one day. That's it. Yeah. It's going to be worse for a long time. All right. Well, let's move on to happier things, as I said before we started the show. I can't. Are they, though? Well, we're going to talk Are about they, happy though? things, and then when it's all over with, then we can complain we can go back air. to be the sad things. So <laughs> we can save that for later. All right, Adam, what do you got for your opener presented by Factor Fabrication? Uh, so earlier this week, I stumbled across an article by Jalopnik entitled... My favorite. Something about, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how much we love Jalopnikin. Generally speaking, we this agree will, with their opinions. This will be good. Yeah. It was something along the lines of cars that every gearhead loves or something like that. Okay. These are the only cars every gearhead likes. There you go. Okay. We did it. Didn't we do an episode on this where we tried to guess three that we all liked? That we, just us. Just three. Just not, not even every gearhead in the world, just us three. And we, Couldn't. if I remember correctly, basically failed. Clickbaity title is clickbait. Yeah. Yeah, so we and, had a 100% uh, fail. I feel like I'm certainly not the least, uh, or certainly not the most closed minded about certain, about cars well, in this group. And I don't even like most of these. Yeah. So let's do it then. Let's see this list of cars that we are supposed to like, not love, but like. So first of all, let's prerequisite this because he did have a, a kind of an interesting he introductory, had a long paragraph. introduction. I'm not going to read. Yeah, no, and, I, and but I'll paraphrase it for you. Okay, I'll, I'll you. give you the TLDR on it. Uh, basically, he said that he understands that there is no car on the planet that every gearhead will unanimously love. That does not exist, and I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Like the F50. Everybody loves it. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Uh, keep going. But what he said was that he believes that these cars are cars that any gearhead can appreciate, even if they're not necessarily their cup of tea, that they have done something for the automotive community that any automotive gearhead enthusiast, whatever you want to call them, will appreciate that car if they go, if it's at a cars and coffee or if you go into someone's garage and they have one. Okay. So basically, the editor got a hold of this and changed the title for the article to make it misleading. So it's not even you don't even have to like the car. You well, just have to say appreciate. Yeah. I feel like okay. I feel like they're using appreciate and like as a as synonym. A, syn- uh, yeah, they're synonymous. And I don't know that I necessarily agree with that because I can appreciate something and despise it. I don't think the writer chose the title. That That's might typically be. How but it goes. Uh, anyway, because he opened it, he this is a Beetle owner. Oh. And he and he admitted that guy. <laughs> right. and he admitted that uh that there are people out there who hate the Beetle and he understands where the hatred comes from and so that car could not be on this list. Perfect. Yeah, obviously. We're so, on the same page so, at so least, far. Yeah. But it 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 devolves. So the BMW 2002 is that's, the first one. That's the first one. It's not a 2002 BMW. It's not. No, it's a BMW 2002 from the 70s. I don't love this car. No. But I don't hate this car. It's I, it's it is water to me. It is neutral. It is I wouldn't I go, think that's okay. I, I wouldn't neutral. go out yeah. I wouldn't go out of my way to own one. I would drive one. Yeah, absolutely. For fun a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If a so friend of mine had one, I would I wouldn't, look at it. I wouldn't pay money. Right. Not much money. Right. If someone's well, like, if I felt like I could flip it, make a profit on it, I wouldn't. There are cars that I wouldn't even buy if I felt like they were a good deal. Now, I'd, that's not one of them. If, I mean, if this was a steal and I could just kind of drive it to and from things for fun, what if nobody knew that you had it? That wouldn't make a difference. No, okay. I don't. I don't bow to peer pressure. <laughs> I don't care. Robbie, I'm my own man. Really doesn't Robbie give Ellis a shit. swaps two forties. Yeah, I don't give a shit Which what anybody else thinks. Still, kind of wonder if there's really as many people who hate that as he thinks there are. There's no way. Are just as vo- they're just vocal, vocal people. Just yeah. hot boys. Yep. Right. I like this car. 
You so like I think this, this one passes. I, I'm okay passes with this one. I will, I will give him this one if he's going to go with appreciate as his I feel uh, like, word. I feel like we need at least one, so I'll give this one I think him. this is an important car to BMW's future, even though they're currently ruining it. It's a very important car to their heritage. Yes. In the least. Yes. How so? Uh, that was one of the first cars we got oh. from them. I think it might be the first car we got from them even. So does he go into explain uh, that? I probably, but okay. who wants I'm to read that read stuff? It. But uh, it was kind of a fun, sporty, affordable, well-handling car. It, they were very popular in like SCCA club racing in their day. Um, okay. You know, I, I think that it is an important car to their heritage. Yeah, it's a fun little they made, two door. They made turbo versions of them. Yeah, that's which fun. were really rad. Turbos so. are fun. It's good. It's a good car. It's an yeah. okay, it's an okay car. It Move passes. On. Number two. Oh, on. Second one on the oh. list is the Volvo one twenty two Amazon. Amazon. The Amazon. Uh, is what most this people is going downhill real I fast. think again, this is an important car for Volvo, Volvo and their history. So I w- I. But I don't know that I, I... I'm more where Robbie is on the 2002. Like, I'd drive it. I don't no. think I'd own it. No. But if somebody else had it, I'd say, oh, that's cool. Mm. I would... Good for you. Walk by it to look at the 2002. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't even notice this car. I don't think that this car is especially handsome or good looking. I think that in its era, it looked like everything else. And I don't think it's that cool. If it was an amphibious car, called that's an kind Amazon, of what, and because that, that, that's kind of what it looks like to me is that amphibious car. It's also for kind some, of it's also kind of a reason. letdown with the name. Yeah, what's so exotic about this thing? It's not. I'm. No. See, I feel like the P eighteen hundred would have been a better option for a Volvo. In my mind, that's that's a car that more people will universally appreciate. What numbers? Because it? I think it's a better looking car. Volvo P eighteen hundred. So this car was named after the female Greek warrior, not the place, not the jungle, right? Oh, just FYI. So yeah. does it have like long legs and? Yeah, the P eighteen hundred is way better, right? P eighteen hundred would have done better on this list in this position. Hundred percent. I it's think not so on too. Here. That's but, a. That's a. That's a good looking car. But I think that this it's a, it's, a, it's not a bad looking car. Right. It's very <laughs> handsome. It's, I like it. It's fine. There was one in Nevada and I like it. I would drive that. Yeah, they're cool. That's a, that's a conversation starter right there. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, like the Amazon's like, what, just, just not that interesting. Neat car. What, what kind of car is this? It you, looks so bland and boring to me. Yeah, you get this, that. Yeah. And then this. Yeah, ah, yeah. See? Robbie knows what I'm talking about. So again, I think this solidified an important part of the history of Volvo. So it was the first car to have front seat belts as standard and then the first car to have a three-point seat belt. But I feel like the only way you're going to appreciate that is Is if you already knew it. Yeah, I'm not going to know that. I don't just look at that car and appreciate it for what it is. I have to know some history about Volvo and the fact that it was cutting-edge safety to care. Well, then I, you're not a true gearhead. My, yeah, exactly. Know. How do you not fucking know? <laughs> my dad would not care at all in any way, shape, or form about that vehicle. I guarantee it. Okay, so we're mixed on that one. Yeah, so we're going to get the next one. The Willis Jeep. Yep, I'm in on this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. It's an important vehicle for America in general. I th- yeah, for sure. I think if you don't like the Willys Jeep, the original Jeep, there's something wrong with you. What did I say, Willis? Willys. Willys. Sorry. There's a Y on there. Willis, Willys. Whatever. The newer Jeeps, take them and leave them. Whatever. The old Jeep, super rad. Yeah. All right, carry on. Easy enough. The original BMC Mini. Yep. I'm yes. on this one 100%. 100%. What the fuck? What? What are you talking During about? During our episode, I brought up the Mini. The new Mini Cooper is not different. the old one. The original Mini Cooper and the new Mini Cooper. Totally different. Not the same vehicle. Okay. Well, I, way, like I, the new I like Mini. them both. But I don't like get me the wrong. new Mini. I don't have anything against All right, it. Well, then this Mini is super rad. Yeah, absolutely. I would love an old Mini. When these important were... car for automotive racing history in general. Absolutely. Yes. It's just it's just great. And I think they're cool. They're iconic. Everybody knows it. Even car non car people know what a Mini Cooper is. These are my fa- like they had five of them at Good Guys. They're my favorite cars there. Absolutely. I didn't, care, super sh- rad. I didn't care about anybody else's cars. Super rad. I'm all about it. 
All right, so we're in on this one? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, sure. Pretty good. We're three for four. This is so less arguable than I had anticipated. The Honda Acura NSX. Yes. The old one. The original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. The original. Yes. The, the 90s. I'm in on the Ayrton Senna one. I'm right. in on this. I think that... Yeah. I think that anybody who's a gearhead should be able to appreciate that car for what it is. Give me a reason not to. Yeah. I mean, I, why would... I mean... Is it a Honda? Is that your problem? Honda. Right, yeah. Is that people's problem? But it's rear-wheel drive, mid-engine, one of the like, better performing cars. It's got a V6 yeah, it's, in it. It's you know? awesome. Sounds great. Costs a billion Handles dollars. Really well. Are they still a billion dollars? I think... I, you're gonna I spend hundred k. I bet you spend hundred k. Really? I bet you do. Man, that sucks. Especially be, now. I think you get like a nice one. I have sixty. Gonna, yeah. I, I bet sixty is yeah, pretty I common. Think so. I'm on the bay motors here. Just give, me, just give think, me a quick number. What are they like, called here? Acuras. Acura Acuras NSX. Here? Unfortunately, I think they're like Supra territory now. At least. Clicking stuff just on the bay. Clicking on for stuff. For whatever reason. Uh, I can have a new one for one fifty. Don't care about those. Um, there's a lot of new ones. I don't hate. There's a couple one. nice ones: fifty nine, fifty two. Okay, oh, okay. Well, forty nine. I mean, they're still reasonable. Then eighty. That yeah. one's a little pricey. Well, seventy. Got that guy. Seventy. Fifty two. Okay. That was a little high on my hundred guess then. Oh, here's like the final production one with seventeen thousand miles. It's one hundred twenty eight. Okay. That's maybe that's, I was gonna say. Maybe, I'm sure. Maybe you can, that's I'm maybe sure that's can, the one that's sticking out in my mind. I'm sure you can spend a hundred. So Easy. they're definitely more expensive than they were like five years ago because they were like thirty thirty five grand. I do remember seeing them for thirty. Yeah, I think they were kind of at but, the bottom uh, of their depreciation curve at that point. And they've, they've started gone right back, back up. up again. Yeah. So anywho, but yes. All right. So what I'm are we? In on that four one for as five. Well. Four for five. That's not so bad. Oh. The GTI? <laughs> yeah, the first gen one. The, yeah, that's an important car. I love the first gen one. It's my favorite of the Volkswagens. <laughs> yeah, I knew Robbie was going to hate on me. Nope. Because it's he not hates a- it. He <laughs> hates it because it does multiple things. It's a fast hatchback. He hates that. In its day. That's a great little rabbit, little uh, jet or Omni. I think it was. it's still fast now. Is it? See, if it was a For diesel the- Passat, he would love it. No, yeah, oh, D- diesel. That's where it's he's at. A, oh, the he's diesel a thing. You're right. Yeah. No, it about needs that. to be a Jetta. Because his, or sorry, Jetta. I meant Jetta. Whatever it was that you had at one point. I do like that car. Yeah. See. <laughs> Zero to sixteen eight seconds. I'm calling that a fast car. Still. <laughs> it's I mean, not, how many horsepower does it have? Like 100. Only only 112, and it still did Ooh, zero to sixty in eight seconds. That's because it doesn't weigh good. anything. Look at those pillars. Exactly. That's how it should no, be. No, it's fantastic. That's how it should be. The Omni was built to be. Uh, on paper, ten percent better in every way than that car. Is it? I think that they achieved their goal. Yes, like it was supposed Why? to be ten percent better, on the zero list, to then. sixty. Ten percent better uh, on a drag strip. Ten percent better on a skid pad. That was that was the baseline for the car for the GLH. And was it ten percent more expensive? I have no idea. I can't answer that question, Robbie. Let's However, say, let's say it was that 10% being less said, expensive. I think that this is a more important car for a couple of reasons, even though it may or may not be the better one. Okay. Uh, number one, it was the first one. Yep, it that, came, that helps. It, was, it is what defined the hot hatch segment as we know it today, Okay. which I think is very important. And uh, number two, they still make a Golf. Yep. They haven't killed it, whereas Dodge doesn't even make a small car, let alone a hot hatch. So, it has stood the test of time. Also, I, these are worth a lot, a lot more. Yeah. I will not disagree with you on this, then. I just don't care about them. You don't have to own one. It's okay, right? Exactly. Right, that's not you the point. You don't have to have any I part of it. It, does, it does say that you I don't... I bet you drive not, it real fast if somebody Yeah, if they let me. Yeah. That's yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk shit on it at Cars of Coffee. I'll give you that. I think they're cool. It's whatever. I want one. All right, we're five for six. What's next? Is that it? I think that That's might be it? the end of it. Wow. It was a pretty short list. That was not a bad list, actually. The thing is, I, I think that it has to be a short list because... And we... Like, can you think of anything? I know it's kind of off the cuff, and he oh. probably had to really put some thought into this, but is there anything that you would be able to put on that list that he, you don't think is on there? That gearheads will appreciate? Everybody. Unanimously, universally, across the board, a car that no one will will just hate the c1 corvette yeah that's i would agree with that that's the first even, one that jumps or even the head. first gen mustang that's yeah I would, I would say the I first gen the mustang, mustang too. is a, because the c1 corvette was kind of they a don't have to beat each other corvette. it just has to be a list 
Well, it doesn't have to be a good car. It just says you have to appreciate it. Well, that's fair. You want to talk about t- saying the test of time, Corvette. No, yeah. one's la- no one's lasted longer. Yeah, you're 100%. I think you can safely say that, yes. Feel confident in that. I'm in on the at first least gen. in America. How about first that? first gen or the like the sixty four? Well, is America. We don't care about anywhere else. I don't know. There's other there's, places. I don't yeah. even know. No. There's other cars like because I don't. I don't remember when the Civic was introduced, but it certainly wasn't the fifties. No, it was like think. the seventies. I would. That's what kind of what I want to leave. I've seen like a, a really old one at Hot Import Nights. I can't remember yeah. what year. There it was. was a kid in my hometown that had a real old one that was awesome. But I think you might be right in saying that that's the longest running. Uninterrupted, I think it is model suburban. Is it really? It's the suburban. Dang. Really? Yep. That's we're only talking about cars. We don't care about. All SUVs right, Mr. Right Pedantic, now. you relax. <laughs> I think you the think longest. That could I think go the on the list. Longest running. No, I don't know that the suburbans. No gearheads. No. I mean, if you want to talk about like automotive history, I was just talking about the longest running nameplate. No, I understand that, but do you think the suburban or or do you think there's a truck that could go on that list? Mm, no, no, because at some point they've ruined something. Yeah, so I, re- I, really- I, I, I can think of pickups I really like. Is there like a, really old ones? Is there a gearhead out there that doesn't appreciate? You know, a, an old pickup, like an F one hundred, like like they're really yeah, or like well, I a, can't think of a year, like, like an early C ten. I think you can appreciate it. I think any gearhead can appreciate. It doesn't have to be any pedestrian. It just has to be a gearhead. Pick a generation. Of C, I think the sixty-seven to seventy-two C ten. I don't know how you could hate on that because that's like almost a, as perfect of a truck as you can make. It's very iconic. Yep. I think that that could fit on this list. Yeah, I would give you that. I don't know what generation that is. I have no idea. Is that first? Or no, no, I don't. Think no, because there was definitely the yeah, C ten before, the and then there were trucks before that too. Yeah. Two nineteen seventy-two. Yeah, I don't know where that that cutoff is. Yep. But like that's nothing wrong with that. That's in there. I think that's good. Yeah. I feel like you could safely put that on the list. What about a '90s Cummins Ram? No, no, because people are gonna hate on the diesel. You shouldn't though. I really don't find the only people that hate on stuff. It's like the Mustang. It's only because you like Duramax stuff, which they didn't even come out with till much later. Or the Power Stroke stuff. Well, I think that was like a. I think there's gas people who don't want anything to do with diesel, though. Yeah. See, I think. I think you should appreciate that for what it is, because we wouldn't have pickup trucks as we understand them now without that. I won't disagree. I don't disagree. With there was that, a, but I, about I a billion of them. Everybody there were. Them. And it's amazing because neither one of the other two had a real competitor for that. Not at the time. At no. that level, for sure not. GM had dog shit. If you wanted a heavy duty consumer pickup, yeah, you get a four fifty four. They got like eight miles to the gallon and made like two hundred and thirty horsepower. Great. And then you could get a Kodiak with a cat diesel, I think, which I heard were not that great. Maybe that's not true, but can't speak to it. So yeah, anyway, I, I I guess I can't argue. As far with as that. trucks go, that would be a potential option. I just think that the diesel is the issue because I think there are gas people out there who hate. Who can't appreciate diesel? Oh well, well then they're not gearheads. We can use that. There we go. There. Perfect. We can use that. Solve that problem. Yeah, take that. They're just a bunch of nerds. Well, that's anything, probably true. Anything else you can think of? I don't know. It, no. Nope. That's it. Uh no. I got nothing. Lamborghini Mira. If you don't like a Mira, there's something wrong with you. I mean, I guess I can appreciate what it is. It completely yeah. defined the supercar. It did. As a car I, genre. I don't think that it's the best looking no. Lamborghini it's, it's that's not, ever It didn't been say made. that. It just says you have to right, yeah, appreciate it. I'm saying a lot of people like talk about that car like it's... The second coming of Jesus. Like it might be the best looking car, period. No. But especially the best looking Lambo. And I don't even think that's necessarily true. I do get its historical significance. And I absolutely appreciate it. I think they're rad. But I don't know that they're the best looking Lambo. And not a lot e- of people not even a little that. bit. I understand that's not what we're talking about here, but people do say that. So, Robbie found the worst one. How did you? Why's the why's the hood orange? Because the, the lights on top. Of it. Terrible <laughs> light. This is the the paint's probably that thin. That's no, probably part of it. No, no. <laughs> right, I'll find, the I'll Italians find, painted. Hold on, I it found could be that's anything. true. Yeah, here, I found you. They, a worst they one. probably ran out of. Paint. Found you a worse one. That one's not you worse. You know what? Get the fuck out of here. 
That's in, not worse. Are you kidding me? They're Green? all worse. In a Lambo? It, okay, it's you, right got, you got a Mira sitting next to a Countach, and you're going to sit here and tell me that the Mira's more... Okay, well, what about the Lamborghini Countach? I'll give you that. that I think the Countach How can you not like a Countach? I don't know that there's really any classic Lamborghini that couldn't fit on this no, list, say frankly. Diablo. I mean, maybe a, like a Yalpa or whatever those were called. Maybe not be like the crown and achievement. Do you think a lot of old Ferraris would, like, who can hate an old Ferrari, right? Like a 250 GTO? Who can hate on that? Nobody. And if they do, there's something wrong with them. Yeah, you're just a bitter old man. So 250 GTO, Lamborghini Countach. McLaren F1. Ooh. McLaren F1. I think that's absolutely the case. I assume he was uh, probably going for, like, yeah, he's consumer trying to, he, level cars. Yeah, he's not talking uh, supercars, so. hypercars, stuff like that. There's your GTO 250. Yeah. It's only fifty million dollars, Robbie. Speaking of GTO, do you, do you feel like the, GT looks the like. original Pontiac GTO, or maybe even the Judge, the seventy two ish? Sixty four I is my personal favorite, but do you feel like that could fit on there? That's the the original muscle car. You know? Uh I can't argue with that. If you go wide stroke, I would say no, because I don't think people care. But they're not gearheads then. If there are people out there that don't care about the GTO, then there are people out there that don't care about the golf. 100%. I think the GTO's appeal is smaller. No. Why do you say that? Because it's a GTO judge. Everybody loves it. Well, that's broad brush. brush I think that Michael's thinking globally, and you're thinking. Gearheads in the United States. No, no, no. Globally, the GTI would be a more popular car. Absolutely, but that's only because it was marketed to a larger. To glo- it was marketed globally. Now, see, now that's not the, the, that's not the article. Left. That's not the article. I think that you have the, to appreciate a GTO. Uh, yeah, th- that's my point. Is like the general consumer might be like, "Yeah, I had a GTO. It was great. I right. never had a GTO." Gearheads. Yeah, as a gearhead, I think you, you have love, to appreciate you gotta, it. Yeah, I love the GTO. I feel like. The first car of any major genre, you almost have to appreciate any gearhead oriented genre. Dodge Grand Caravan? That's not a gearhead. <laughs> no, it'd be the. They made a turbo one. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'll say that's a problem. People are going to really like. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the best one. <laughs> he'll tell, he'll tell you, he'll tell you straight up. It. George loves it. I think that it probably is the best of its class. I don't think that that means that every gearhead appreciates a minivan. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So. Is that it? That's what I got. It was less arguing than I had anticipated. Jalop we agreed wrote with a, almost all of them. They wrote a better article than I thought they did. I, I agree with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you we can guys, go back and I can argue it a little more if you, you want. Should we just take to... the whole show back to the beginning and we'll just start what over? What the fuck? No, on every yeah. single one. The GTI. I could, I could probably come up with a different one if we need to be more yelly about it. We just next make up We could yell more next week. I'll find something to fire us up next week. Good. Factor Fabrication, factorfabrication.com, Factor yeah. Fabrication on the Instagram machine. If you can dream it, they can build it. Th- did it just say that? <laughs> and then it went away? <laughs> it's a uh, dream it, we'll make it. <laughs> that's not, that's close, not, close enough. That's not as good. If yeah. you can dream it, we can live it. Factorfabrication.com. Booney is very angry at somebody about BMW comments. It's fine. Not me this time. It's... There's only I just said that there the BMW people are like Porsche people, but there's more BMW people. That's I don't what think, I said. I think that our BMW group got there real are, upset about that. There comment. are more BMW people than Porsche people. Yeah, but, but it's I, the same people. But I think that they think that how dare you compare us to those guys? Those it's the people. same people. You guys those just like a different people. brand. It's the same. They do the same things. They like flock, and they have clubs, and they do track days together. It's the same people. I think. I think the biggest difference between the two is that Porsche people are more vocal about it. About what? Well, because like I see way more classic Porsche, old Porsche only this, Porsche only that stuff than I see BMW stuff. Oh, I don't agree with that at all. I think they're the exact same people. They just drove one before the other one. That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like German car, sports car, clubs, they have their own clubs, right? BMW yeah. Club of America, Porsche yeah. Club of America. Yeah. It's the same people. It's just they got into one and not the other one. Or there's fewer Porsches than there are BMWs, so therefore there's more people in the BMW Club. It's the same people. I just think that... It's a, it's just like people that own Evos 
and STIs. They're the same people. I just think the Porsche people are more shouty about it. They gotta Fair. like they gotta like make YouTube channels and and podcasts. There's better marketers. I wonder if there is a BMW podcast. Somebody's got to have a BMW podcast. There's like a ton of them. I'll guarantee it. Just like Porsche podcast. There's a See, mini, it's the same. There's a mini podcast and a Tesla podcast. So, what are you looking up there, Rob? You're doing a lot of yeah. You're really stuff. typing away on. I'm stuff. just trying to get a picture of his BMW. <laughs> it's a Z Z R three. S U R R E C T I O N on Instagram. Z three oh. rec- resurrection. Z three resurrection. I I don't know. How to, whatever. <laughs> All right, uh, so, shall we move it on? Yeah. Uh, so as we've already complained about, we're back from Vegas. It sucks. It's yeah. terrible to be here. We got like a a foot of snow. Yes. I still can't get all of my cars out of the driveway. <laughs> yes. It's horse shit. It is horse shit. I spent. I, sp- I literally didn't go to work today and spent nothing but scooping time. I scooped about half of the pile that the city had left on the end of my driveway. Yep. And then said, fuck it, and went quickly with my vehicle and just burst out of it. Yep. The truck is the only thing that can make it out of the driveway right now. The edge is stuck in his driveway. The edge is not capable. It's where it lives. It's, it's, it's a combination of where I live. It's also a combination of... Thank you, Ford, for making a 21-inch tire or wheel. With a sport tire on With it. With only sport SUV. tires. That's all you can buy. That's that, only I was, different I was, wheel drive. I was talking to her today. I was like, you know, we could get you some Blizzaks or something. Wait, no, we can't. You have to buy another, to buy another set of rims. rims. Yeah. Right. You have to get it. Which I assume that you could go way down in size. Yeah, I could. I could Because it's replace not like that they're like running 17s. that big of a rim to clear your brake calipers. <laughs> Although I'm sure they're big too. Or there'll be something stupid where there's an A arm that protrudes into the wheel like <laughs> on the Trailblazer. Yep. Well but you need a wheel you needed twenty two inch or twenty inch wheels on the Trailblazer. You couldn't go smaller. Really? Yeah, correct. That sucks. I wonder if because I assume that the like a base model edge comes with seventeens. But I, I don't know if they're swappable at that point. No, I think at? they come with like 20. Is that the ones that you have on yours? Yes. It's such a 21 is such a stupid size. Yep. I think they're 21s. Maybe they're 22s. I can't remember. They're freaking huge. And there's only two tires they make for them. One's a Han Cook, the other's a Pirelli. 200 bucks a pop. Pirellis. And they totally don't. If it's good enough for Formula One, it's good enough for your edge. You know, right, not, you know what's not good enough? Driving on the snow. <laughs> not an option. Pretty sure they don't have a snow tire in Formula One. No. Well, they they have the ones that are covered in chains. So they do for that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Just order some of those. How much yeah. are they? Yeah. Yeah. Just get some tire chains, Robbie. It'll be fine. I'll, yeah. I was I was literally to the point where I was ready to just put zip ties all around it, so she had some sort of grip. I was pissed. Zip ties off. on what? Just wrap it around the whole th- the whole, the shit. whole thing. I, I was maniac. so People I was so done, sick I've seen of that being on, in the. I've seen that on the internet. Like you can buy zip ties that are designed specifically for that. For when you're stuck. Yeah, and we tried that at work. It doesn't help. That vehicle's been stuck twice this year. That vehicle will be sold soon. I can't believe it's that bad. I can't. I can't believe how bad those tires are. Uh, yeah, I think it's just the tires. Yeah. Well, it is only front wheel drive, which is also yeah annoying. Very annoying. But I don't. I mean, I've driven two wheel drive vehicles most of my yeah driving career, and it's never really been an issue. To be completely honest, my S10 with snow tires was night and day better than my oh, Audi yeah. ever was. I'm sure. So, I don't. No, the, the tires know, would make a huge difference. Right. I'm not convinced that all-wheel drive with those tires would be any much better. You'd just be spinning all four tires instead of two. No, because the stupid traction code won't allow you to spin the tires. Well, it just it just spins for a second, and then it goes at like a mile an hour. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not going to spin because we won't let you. Yeah, but no, I can't get unstuck, you stupid thing. <laughs> it's the worst traction control system I've yeah. ever heard of. And there's not a button to shut off. You had to go into the dash and like scroll through some stuff. And even then, it doesn't let you do stuff. I think that that's an annoyingly large percentage of vehicles on the road today. I'm sure. The Mine traction control button. systems the button. You are push shit. the button, and the traction control turns off. And if you hold the button down, both the traction control and the stability control shut off. Do you have... That's it. Yeah. Do you have good... Do you, are you running anything tire-wise, or are you just nah, running whatever you were running before? The car does pretty well so far. Hell yeah. Because it's kind of low, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of low. Kind of yeah. low. It's all-wheel but... drive, though. Right. I, I think what really... Rip around in it, and it's rear-wheel drive base, so you can slide it. Oh, nice. It's great. I think what frustrated me the most was that I sort of scooped out the trailer, and then 
pulled it, basically drug it out, and then backed it into the garage so I could get it to thaw out in case the roads are nice enough to go pick up that car. And then her car can't go 10 fucking feet. But I'm, a li- I'm able to drag, so drag a trailer, a trailer. around the truck. And I have not great tires. Right. That's like the first thing I'm going to replace on that, tr- on that truck. Right. So in the Avalanche, does it have full-time all-wheel drive or no, is it a it's, switch? It's a switch. It's on a switch. Okay. Because the Escalade had full-time all-wheel drive. Nope, this is a Did switch. Did you even switch to it? I switched to, I was on four. Okay. Four high. Because, like, I have it in the Blazer, never used it. I I use it, this, I, when it's like this, I use it. Yeah. Obviously. Because you have to or because you because just Because I did? have to. There's okay. no way I would have got out of that driveway otherwise. Okay. Nah, Satin's, again, Satin's been. Right. Well, as long as my traction control will let me. My work truck is like a one-ton van chassis with, with, dual, with a dually axle mm. on the back and it's got that big cube on the back of it so it's got a ton of weight over those back wheels tank thing is yeah, a be nice. beast mode dude. that's a lot of grip back there it's a badass i love that thing that'd be good should we talk about warmer days last yes, weekend please. um should i we, think we'll should we try to do this chronologically i think what we'll do Probably. is let's avoid um a bit about our too much about like the actual presentation because you will be able to find that when john Gets yeah. it to us. It we will be available. We have it. We do not have it. We, uh, oh, it we, didn't work? It didn't work. Dang it didn't come it. through. Dang it. So we, I will get I it. I thought we had it. I will no. get it posted as soon as I can, but John is also on vacation, so please, if it's not available by the time this comes out, just realize that John deserves time off because he ran the whole convention. Yeah. He worked, he, so just yeah, worked work. to the he worked bone. worked his ass off. Yep. yep. And he did really well. So, it was great. It will come out. Yep. Uh, it's about time trials. Yep. For the most part, yeah, so, and runoffs. And runoffs. Talk about VIR runoffs. Nada. So if you're interested in. The future of. Time attack. Time attack. SCCA. Yep. And yeah. the future of the SCCA. So if you're interested in those topics, that'll be available. It's a good interview. Uh, but let's talk about other stuff that we did. So we landed at like, what, 1 a.m. Like local time? Yeah, I think 12.30. 12.30 local time. So it was completely dark. Couldn't see anything. None of us have ever been to Vegas before, so we didn't really know what to expect. Nope. Uh, hitched our Uber out of the god-awful airport. That is the worst parking setup ever. Well, so what I've noticed... And I, I know you guys noticed this too, but uh, I think that some palms were greased, and oh, yeah. uh, the taxis get preferential um, parking or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they can they can pick up people in front of the airport, whereas ride and the hotels and the hotels and the ride shares have to go to like the third floor of the parking garage right. in the back corner. Right, and you got to walk uh-huh. a mile and a half to get to the closest ride share area from anywhere. So. Yeah. Didn't work though, because we still we used did it. it. <laughs> just let it go, taxis. Just let it go. It's just time to let that industry die. Yeah. Yep. Oh well. Sucks to suck. Yes, it but does. But anyway, uh, so we wake up. What did it, Friday morning? Yes. God, I can't even remember. No, it's all a blur. Right. It's just one day. Wake just up Friday day. morning. Walk outside. Mountains. Yeah, it's very beautiful. I love outside. it. The place is amazing. Sunny, sixty degrees. But mountains. you can see snow in the mountains. That's the way that God intended snow. What's to be. uh, where was that photo, Robbie? That, that was taken at the, the interstate. Yeah, the corner right by the hotel, by the South Point Hotel. We were the most touristy people. Yeah, taking pictures of the stuff. We, we just went for a walk and started taking pictures of landscapes. Yeah, people, yeah. People are asking us what I did. I was like, I, I, I just walked. I looked at things and I yeah. walked. It was great. That's all I did. Why wouldn't you? I didn't spend like any money. I just looked at things. No, in in all reality, we Those, did pretty good. I think collectively we gambled twenty dollars. Twenty six dollars. Do you spent twenty six dollars? Twenty six dollars. I think I gambled maybe less. Ten. Zero. So f- less than forty. Definitely less than forty. I was entertained for five minutes and then I was bored. Yep, I was sick of it. You got a free drink out of it though, didn't you? I did. I did get a free drink. So out of it. win because that probably would have cost you more. <laughs> yeah, the first drink I bought was seven dollars. So yeah. Oofed. Yep. So then Friday, Friday afternoon, we went to Celebrity Cars. We did. We went to check out. They had a pretty cool show. They had um, Tupac's. Is that who it was? Yes. Yeah. Tupac's BMW. Yep. That he got murdered in. That he was murdered in. Yeah. Look at that. And Al, right behind it was Al Capone's armored Cadillac. Those were both really like historically cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Million dollar cars. Yep. Million dollar cars. Um, it's just so weird. But then they had like you know more normal stuff like a noble and I mean not normal normal but like more reasonable stuff you could buy for less than a hundred thousand dollars. Right, the noble and and uh, Robbie's dream car. Which one? The Lotus. 
The, oh yeah, the Lotus did, Race card. Did we even take a picture? Or were we nope, too I was too busy like, talking to the yeah, guy we about it. Yeah, we were too busy looking. Why at didn't it? you buy that? I don't know. I don't know. What did they deal? want for it? Thirty. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. That was right. a, a like an exceed or sorry, an at least cup. Yeah. Car. Had, with a, had with, been raced with a cage. Yep. Good to go. Yep. Drive it onto your trailer. Take it out of there. Yep. You could have had it, Robbie. You could have had the I real. Had it. It's still there. I could big still time have race it. Car. Probably anyway. Yeah, could be. You going. don't know that. I don't know. Better call somebody. I'm not gonna. I've already spent. For shame. He's got. I'm sure Michael's got a business card. I bet he does. <laughs> I'm not buying that. 911. That 911 was overpriced. Yeah, it turned out. That's that's, that's where the starting point is. Everyone yeah, knows that. You haggle it, man. They, well, they I have know a number. It, you know I it. have a number. I'll send it to him. Yeah. We'll see what he says. <laughs> like, hey, I'm looking to come down there and live. It's fine. I'll just come pick it up. Yeah. I told you. You don't have to worry about shipping. Whatever, whatever they wanted to charge you for shipping, cut it in half. I'll drive it home. Well, if I live down there, I'd just, well, you know, yeah, just you take it, you take it to my to apartment. It. I'll yeah. just take it to my apartment. And I'll stuff. still drive it to your apartment for that. <laughs> <laughs> for $500. It's the least I could do. So I did look at the 911. I uh, didn't buy it. Talk, no, I was talk, told. Yeah. Despite I was told the fact to. that everybody basically said, "Yeah, you, even it's your not mo- their fucking money." <laughs> what I loved is that even your mom got in on the conversation. Yeah, it's a great car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's buy it. Yeah, Fantastic. none of these Thank people you. are using my money to buy this car. Or I should say, they're all using my money to buy this car. That's, they're not using their own money. That's the best way. I mean, that's what happened. Buy a car. That's what happened with the Z. The Z was. A smaller amount of money by a large margin. No, barely. It's, no, like, the same, it's like the same car. Bullshit. <laughs> this car is way more expensive. By the than time that Robbie's car. done with it, yeah, it'd be like the same car. At least yeah, that's, but that's like that's a just, driver. At least he's he's like financing. He's put a little bit of money in it here. A little. That's bit of how money you would buy this car. Here. Yeah, My, not that month. one. <laughs> it's too expensive. Month to month. It's, it's too fine. expensive. It's still too expensive. We could go get it. It'll be fine. We could. Dr- yeah, there's look. You want to see what pages I have open right now? It's Auto Trader. <laughs> look, it's funny because anybody wants to call my bluff on it, look, look at your screen. What is that? There is five open. <laughs> this one's way cheaper. <laughs> it's funny because he walked away from the car and we were standing there talking to the sales guy and we're like, yeah, he's now he's that serious. Go. He's talk more to serious him. and he's letting on about that car. Like you just need to push him a little bit. He'll and he prob- kept pushing. <laughs> Should have just told him, like, dude, your price is is just way too high. Make me a deal. And he was ready. But you no, just, he you wasn't. He didn't use those words. He said I'd come back on Saturday and drive it too. And I didn't, yes, he did. Didn't and do we didn't it. do we it. We got busy. It. Yeah, Saturday was not a good day for that. Well, it was a busy day. We were busy. And then they were closed on Sunday. We and did I was like, ah, fuckers, yeah, I'm like, can't drive it today. So. This is a nice one <laughs> I'm looking at here. Nah, that one's not as nice. But it was kind of cool to see that place. There was some stuff in there There's that some cars. I've never got to see before. Um, Ford GT. Yeah, sit next to a Supra. Sit next to a hundred thirty thousand dollars Supra. Yep. Well, it had like a mile and a half on it. Yeah, I don't remember what it had. That uh, like, Fox body that had like a hundred and eighty miles on it or something like that. Ridiculously low mileage. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I bet you they've already raised the price on that since that one sold at Barrett Jackson. Probably. <clears throat> Granted, that was like one of 25 or something like that, but yeah. still. And I didn't take a picture of it. There was a 1970-something Corvette they wanted 625000 for because it had, like again, like a half a mile on it. They had a Weird. 72, I think it was, Nova uh, Z28, or what did they call that? It was older than that. It was like a 73 um, Yenko. It was oh, a yeah, LT1. Yenko. Yeah. LT1. LT1? LT1? Yep. ZL1? LT1. Something like that. LT1 was a 350 before it was a second gen small block. Right. But uh, they claimed it was a real Yanko. Pretty rare car. And it's and it's right. So they had a surprisingly large assortment assortment of things. They did. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Super Legera Gallardo. Yeah. All the carbon fiber things. Cool stuff. And a Mercy Lago. And a Mercy Lago. Oh, right. Love, love the Mercy Lago. Yeah, Mercy Lago was great. I would own I would own that car that way as a road, as a roadster. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It looks better. I think that's the right way. It's got, it it's got an aggressive look. Yeah, it looks ridiculous. And like you're not gonna take that car to a track or anything. Like you know, no, you're really not. So enjoy it, right? Take Top it, down. Take, you want to be able, beach. You want to be able to hear that V12. You want yes. other people to see you in it. That's exactly that too, right? why you buy that it. Too. That's exactly Absolutely. why. Top down all the time. People yeah. looking at you taking that's, pictures. That's a Miami Beach car. 
It is hundred percent. You drive that to South Beach. You go up and down the, the rich people areas. All the people on the beach. Oh hey yeah yeah. yeah. Want to go for yeah. For it sure. wasn't even it wasn't even that expensive. Wasn't it like hundred and twenty or something it, like that? A little higher than that, I think, but not much. I didn't even one fifty maybe. It was not outrageous. I'll tell you. I that. wasn't shopping. Considering with you. when all, it was yeah. new, it all, was quite expensive. All things considered, it was not that crazy. Expensive. Not crazy money. So, but that was cool. Yeah. Uh, learned some stuff about Porsches. Yeah. I think that's fair. That's Ooh. right. You learned like a lot of stuff. The right it. year for that. And... No, nah, I knew all that stuff before. Oh, did but you? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do we do after that that day? I can't remember. Oh, that's, that's when we got we lost. That's Caesar's Palace. Yeah. Ugh. That place is. Large. Seriously lost. How many Rolex sh- uh, stores did we see All of them. on Friday? It wasn't like 17. Yeah, there's like, there's probably like Is 17 Is that like there. half of the Rolex departments and department stores in the world are in Las Vegas or what? I don't know, but they're all like 30 yards from each other too. Yeah. You yeah. Could, every building you, you throw go a in, watch to the next one. Every building you and, go in has a Rolex dealer. And do they all have the same watches? Yeah, they all have date jests that nobody <laughs> wants. Because you can't just go into Rolex and buy a watch. That's not. I noticed that every time we walked into a watch place, you would ask for a specific model, and they didn't have it. Right. I, I that was a reoccurring theme. You can't that I just walk in and buy a watch. To. It's like you can't walk in and buy the Ferrari you want. You can't just go in and buy a watch. Oh really? Yeah. It's. I the guess same I'm thing. shopping for way different watches. You got to be put on a waiting list <laughs> because like, everybody yeah, wants never call that you. Watch. I'll take one of the uh, the fossils there. It's literally. It's one of the like, glue ones okay. that you have ten of. It's literally the exact same thing. Like you want a P1? Yeah. Okay, great. You have to have bought every other McLaren that we made, <laughs> and then we'll put you on the list for the P1, and maybe you'll get one. It's the exact same way if you go to Rolex or Adam R P G A. If you want a specific model, you have to buy a bunch of other shit you don't want, and then then they'll get you one. Here's this fourteen thousand dollar watch. Yeah, no, no, no. I want, I want the ninety seven thousand dollar one. Put that, that put that on my watch. That yeah. happened. That happened. That was I a know thing. It did. Apparently, I w- he was mad that I ditched on him. I wasn't. I wanted re- him to try on the fourteen thousand oh, yeah. dollar. The way he Bulgari. was talking to that guy before we knew what the prices were on those watches, I thought he was serious. And me being kind of like old school me, when someone's dead serious about when a someone's deal. working their business. You walk away. I get that. That's not your business. No, That's not, his business. We're not shopping together. You're, you're, right. You're doing your shopping. Right. I walk in. I see- It's a, not my- Literally the only watch that I liked <laughs> was a was one of the tags. <laughs> what I thought I was funny- right on. We were in that uh, Breitling- I wasn't going to buy it. We were in that Breitling store. Yeah. And uh, you were trying that watch on, yes. right? And he looked at yours because you had taken it off and put it on the little thing that they put out there. Yep. And you were- looking at the Breitling, and he looks at your watch and tells you, oh, you have a good taste or whatever he, whatever he said. Yeah. And then Robbie's kind of standing there, too. And, oh, what do you have? And Robbie shows it. <laughs> and he says the same thing, but you know that's not what he yeah, it's felt. Like, <laughs> it's just a Bulova. Don't worry about it. It's like a... It's not a... It, it, I was wearing a nicer watch, but not, right. not on that level. It's not a Breitling. It, it was like probably a... What mine cost, add another zero to it, and that's what his cost. That's, that's how that went. I was like, uh... Yeah, I know. It's a nice watch, but... I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not even. Gonna, you know. I'm just leaving. You, you guys just left. Yep. What? You guys just left. I went and looked at the Ferrari, and the, then the, I told you the price of the the Breitling that I looked at, and you were shocked. Yeah. Was, it was like eighty seven hundred dollars. Oh yeah, I wasn't. Shocked. But but he he could ship it to your house, and then you don't have to pay sales tax. Right. That's genius. <laughs> Seriously. No, I was thinking about that because it's eight percent there. Assuming the the Bivulgari or Bulgari, Bivul- yeah, yeah. But assuming that they do the same thing, that ninety seven thousand dollar watch. That's a that's a deal. That's that's a huge price chunk. Yeah, it's like eight eight thousand dollars or something yeah, like that. That'll pay for a hell of a Vegas trip if you were buying if you were intentionally buying that watch, it would pay for itself just to fly to Vegas and buy it. Just to be clear, I didn't ask to see the ninety seven thousand dollar watch. <laughs> they just it put was, it, they just it, put was it handed under. to me. He said, Here, you should look at this and I said, Holy shit, that's a lot of money. <laughs> he came out of that place like kind of ghost white like guys. Dude. Well, the problem is when somebody just, hands you a ninety-seven. He just handed me a ninety-seven thousand dollar watch like it was no big deal. When somebody's deal. like, "Sir, I have something I would like to show you," and they hand you a ninety-seven thousand dollar watch and you don't know it and you're looking <laughs> at it, and like, "Oh, this is really cool. It's a flying tourbillon or turbo tourbillon," and you flip it over and you look at the back of it and it says ninety-seven thousand dollars on it. You have to just be like, "Hmm, <laughs> ah, that's a little more than I was willing to spend today." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's my mm-hmm. annual salary times two. You Let's put it on. You go, "Hmm, okay," and then you. Mm, yeah. Okay. Let me think about that one. See, I would have had a hard time reaction, like without just. Oh, yeah. ah! no, no, no! 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 We're in two different places here, buddy. 
Well, it was really funny because you walk into the Rolex store and then we walk in and they're like, oh, hey, you know, what are you looking for today? And then as you get greeted by that person, the other person goes to the front of the store and stand next to the door in case you're ready to make a dash. Yeah. Every time. Whenever, the, wa- really whenever the watch case gets unlocked, someone moved to guard position. Yep. I, I assume that's standard, but it was just kind of funny watching it all play out. It was an interesting situation some of them it's might, weird though in those it's like a mall though i mean it's, it is it's a mall but all, all it mall. is is high-end shit yeah like louis vuitton and Gucci. but if he made it out the door i don't know what the fuck they do porsche design so many people. Hope, hope to catch you yeah. so many people in there you get they'll you, get you on camera but yeah you could probably get out of the mall thing though no because you'll get lost <laughs> that's you know how big that place is we got super lost in caesar's palace caesar's palace was crazy i i couldn't believe how big it was I, I guess what I couldn't believe is that every tall building in Las Vegas is a hotel. There's no skyscrapers, just no. hotels. Yeah, that and is. And they the... all have like two thousand rooms, and then that you know that's it. Everything else is just like two story buildings. Yeah, warehouses basically. It's crazy. Yeah, warehouses and hotels. Yeah, that's it. Never in my life have I seen so many people that just took like a pile of money and then just did <laughs> that with it. <laughs> They don't matter. <laughs> Fucking gone. I don't want it. Literally. They were Is shooting that, fireballs at one point. Thousands of people just they, throwing money that, away. That Aria or whatever that hotel was called, that thing place was, was the most opulent thing I've ever seen oh, in my yeah, life. Oh, somebody oh. told me that we totally missed out. The Cosmopolitan that was right next door is yeah. way crazier. I was like, how could it be crazier? <laughs> how is that even possible? I guess that, the Cosmopolitan at one point was voted the greatest hotel in the world. Oh. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> well, then. Do that. There were rollers out front and Bentleys. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that was a Maybach. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly was. Crazy waterfall. The the waterfall. It it, like sped up and slowed down. Yeah. We're sitting there like, that thing's changing speed. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, it's getting faster as it goes across. It changed yeah. the so wave. then it just yeah, they got a wave going and we're all sitting there like looking at it like a bunch of tourists. We were the touristy <laughs> people in the world. It was great. It is, I think we Vegas, don't belong here. It. Um so before we did that, we do have to take a step back. Uh we did go to In and Out Burger. Oh, that's right. We forgot to talk oh, about Oh yeah, that. we did. Uh I don't Yeah, let's let's let you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna be honest and take the heat from I'll, this? I'll do you it. too. I'll take the heat. Fine, I Adam don't continue. think it was Groundbreaking by any stretch. Well, first off, oh, I'm Jesus calling you Christ. out. Fine, call me out. I don't you, want Thousand Island dressing on my burger. What did he do? He ordered the burger as is, and then as soon as it got to his tray, he took it apart and just slid all the condiments off. That's because I oh, thought I it was only that. lettuce and pickle. So it was just everything. And I was just like ah. lettuce, pickle, tomato, sauce, all of it just gone. I thought it was just... all he's got is bun, burger. Other patty. Did you get a double double? Yeah, I got a double double. So he he took the whole bun, authentic. Bun. Pl- that's just, how I want. All he had my was burgers. just a plain burger. Okay. So yeah. That that's how I that eat his them. Does, his doesn't so count. You and I ate them as they were delivered to us, as designed. Did we? Add, was there something that we didn't add? We didn't add onions, right? I don't. Is like that onions. what they asked? Onions are no. What they ask us? I don't remember. We wanted onion. Uh, anyway, I think they asked if you want pickle. I know it was lettuce and tomato. Okay. Anyway. Uh, and we went to the original In and Out before anybody the, in yeah, Vegas. Yep, the, the original one. for Vegas. Yeah, before yep. anybody the, like, the first uh, one. Uh, we went to the first one. It was not very good. It wasn't groundbreaking. I like it. I don't. Five I don't guys is dislike better. It. No. Five guys is better. Yes. No. At double the price, it is not better. It is not double better. Okay, same for same. It's better. If no. I wouldn't pay double the price that, for an In and Out burger. No, is that fair? Okay, yeah. If this costs sixteen dollars, yes, I would not. I would no, no, be no, a whole no. different argument. Uh, just price excluded. You agree that Five Guys is better? Mm, yes. Really? You don't think so? Yes. What about the fries? One hundred percent. Fries are better. Fries are better. Fries yes. are way better. But these are but these the burger is also way too. better to me. I'm not, I wouldn't go way better. It's better for sure. It's, no, I would it's, say it's because better. you custom ordered it there, though. What does well, that have to do with ignore anything? That. Ignore that part. Don't want to. Don't. No, I'm talking about your Five Guys. You. What do you? What do you put on your Five Guys? Uh. Oh, Usually he, I get oh. a bacon cheeseburger. And I see his point. That's a, you mean I might ask him to put barbecue sauce on it, but that's yeah. about it. That's a totally different burger than what you ate. I see yeah, what I was saying. really disappointed by the fact that there wasn't bacon on any of their options. Okay, a burger needs bacon. That's that's, that's I have a hard time with this apples and oranges comparison here. That's fair. 
It's a sixteen dollar burger versus an eight dollar burger that's completely customized. So what's what a, what's an eight dollar burger that you would eat instead of that? Eight dollar full meal? Sure. Nothing. That you said that's the pinnacle of eight dollar. Nothing. Nothing meals. that's jumping out at me right now for okay. eight dollars. I would go to Bebop's night and day every single no. day for the rest of my life. I, 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 I stick with it and out. Fair enough. I don't need to do it again. Is my point. I like it. Yeah, I'm not into it. You guys are gonna. I know somebody's gonna fine. be really pissed. <laughs> so be pissed really about it. The group will be fun this week. It was fine. It just isn't like ground. Yeah, it was fine. It isn't earth shattering. I just don't need to do it again. I've right. been hearing about In and Out Burger for like that's ten never. years. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah. If, you, if, if someone like, had just been like, "Hey, you should go to In and Out Burger," and then you ate it, totally different conversation. Yeah, that was fun. But you've had it built up for ten years. Yeah, and so I was disappointed when it happened because, because it, it wasn't that's because your expectations were not I realistic. thought I was going to have a life changing yeah, experience exactly <laughs> but that's how people sell it that's uh, not no, my I, fault I understand well, the, I, we can, we'll get to it later but that's how I am with Porsches I've, everyone's like seriously it's like a life changing thing to be in a Porsche right okay I think that our Porsche fine. experience I don't know that we can hold that against Porsche yet I'm not, no no it has nothing to do uh, we'll get to that right so I'm going to I'll, 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 I'll try it one more time I'll eat it. I'll eat it anytime it's in if, front of me. Yeah, if if I'm there, I'll eat it. It's not like I'm gonna walk across the street to eat at McDonald's. No, no, I would not eat at McDonald's. Over you know, this. like absolutely, I'm gonna eat it in and out over McDonald's or yeah, I would agree. With Burger that. King. Don't, I would you, agree don't with that. you knock Burger King? I don't oh, like here we go. Their flame broiled whoppers. I don't like Burger King that much. You need to try different. Maybe ones. I need to you try, need try Burger King. You need to try different ones. I'm telling maybe, you, maybe I need to try Burger King. It's better. Hardee's, I'm in on. Oh yeah. Hardy's, I'm good. Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. <laughs> Carl's Jr. And I'm like, in on. I like like Jack in the Box and Wendy's. Those are both good too. Haven't had Jack in the Box. I don't. Wendy's, I think I've had, and that's fine. I don't know if I've had Jack in the Box. We don't have a Jack in the Box around here. Like that's a. Where were we were? Was there one in Vegas? Yes. Me, okay. Yes. Okay. You got to go south of us I didn't to get see it. to. There was a, definitely. A I've seen castle. them like a bunch. You got to get back into like the Waffle House area before you're going to get to Jack in the Box as well. That's fair. Like Bojangles, Waffle Houses. Terrible and a or great in a terrible. We should go way. to a Waffle House sometime too. You never been to a Waffle House? No, I don't think so. Um, maybe it's fine. I feel like it's worth trying. I think you, you got to be drunk, so then I'm out. Right, that's the problem. I'll try it. it. I'll try it. I'll d- yeah, I'll say if someone asked me to try it, I'll eat it. it Have you never eaten there either? I'll, not that I can remember. Oh, okay. Maybe once. When we worked, when I was working in Georgia, we had one right across the street from our hotel. Oh yeah, then yeah, so we ate there all the time, more than once, and it's it's just a greasy breakfast. It's fine. That's okay. There's nothing wrong. I'm with down greasy with breakfast. greasy breakfast. No. We had a fantastic greasy breakfast. Yeah, it was awesome. And I, I, that was my favorite part. It was my favorite part too. Five dollars steak and eggs. Get out of here. Not that part. <laughs> the diner that we'll get oh, to later. Yeah, that was really good too. Absolutely. Uh, so after we did the in and out and the expensive watches and all that stuff, we went to Fremont Street. Which was pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. I don't think we have any pictures of that. No, I don't think so. I, think I we just were. took videos and I didn't want to try and share those to yeah. you. Sorry, Robbie. That's so fine. people should look it up. It's basically all the old strip hotels, but then they put like a uh, screen over the top of this pedestrian walkway. Yep. And it's the whole It's, it's like, like three like, blocks. Yeah, three blocks long. That's Probably. pretty cool. With a zip line? They go, yep. That, yep with I feel like line. the later at night it gets, the more dangerous it is to walk underneath that zip line. Yeah, yeah. that was my first thought. I was trying like, to someone, with someone's pennies. getting spit. No, Spit or I was more or... worried about vomit. Hey, there you oh. go. You get you get a guy who's real drunk and a little motion sick. Yeah, and he vomits on you. I'm curious of how many times that's happened. Hilarious! I'd die of laughter <laughs> as long as it's not to, me. I went to made it. If it happened to somebody else, I would be dead. <laughs> you you gave me a revelation though. Oh, while the like everyone just stops because the screen goes and plays like a oh, video. Yeah. Okay. And so like it just everything. Here, all, we, here we go. I can't here claim, we go. I can't here claim go. responsibility for here the I go. may have given him the revelation. We lost half the people talking shit about in and out. Now we're gonna lose the other half. <laughs> no, we're not. I don't feel like we're gonna lose that. But somebody's it, oh, gonna be but, fucking pissed. No, they shouldn't. But so all the lights will dim. Like all this all they the, do a uh, show like Every, like a five or ten minute show every hour is what it sounded like. Yeah. So like all the shops will dim and then all of a sudden lights go out and then the screen plays and it's just like like a screensaver version music video yeah. of Imagine Dragons Radioactive and he turns to me and goes, Imagine Dragons is the new Nickelback. <laughs> and it just is like, yes! <laughs> That's the most perfect explanation of this shitty band. 
insulted Nickelback fans and Imagine Dragons. I would rather fans. listen to all of Nickelback's oh, song I, start to finish. In comparison, I love listening. Nickelback. Yep. Really? 100%. Ugh. In w- comparison. That's gross. I don't know. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, no. so Nickelback no. has what? Like four albums? Three? Ten? Well, how many? Does it, matter? Does it, it matter? doesn't matter. It's N plus one too many, whatever it is. <laughs> so let's just say there's four. And Imagine Dragons has one. I would rather listen to all four of Nickelback's no. before I'd listen to one. Of no Ra- way, bro. <laughs> no way, bro. 100%. I'd pay, I'd pay extra even just to listen to the one Imagine Dragons no. album. I change the channel most of the time that an Imagine Dragons song That's comes on. For some reason, that is the one band. I don't know if I mentioned it, but when we, t- we were trashing bands a while back. I don't that, think so. That band, is, that is my <laughs> nail on a chalkboard band right now. I listen to anything. What annoys me is that it doesn't matter where you are on our local station list. It's on everything. Like, it's on our alternative rock. It's on our pop. It's on our top 40. It's on our, like... I'm sure it's, it's on our country it's channel. I'm They're, sure. Yeah, they probably play them on country, too, for all I know. It's terrible. I just can't it's get away good. from it. It's not good. That's <laughs> I can't for sure. get away from it. But, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, but like everyone's singing it. Radioactive! <laughs> radioactive! I'm like, come on! Any other and song. it wouldn't it wouldn't end either. It just kept playing and <laughs> yeah, playing I, and I playing. I thought it. Then they rolled into another Imagine it, Dragons yes, song. Yes, they did. Yeah, that's when we walked off the. I had strip enough and walked down towards those other hotels. Yep, that was when I was ready to leave. That one guy's like, "I got your free entry into this nightclub. I'll take it. I don't care. Please, what are you playing? <laughs> it's hip hop. Hanson, great. Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> Give me some hip hop. Bop. Yes, bop all day. No more Imagine. There was Dragons. like a '80s cover band playing like '80s rock, hair metal. It was so that much was better. so much better. <laughs> or the dancing DJs. Dancing DJ was great. Was yeah, weird. she was way better. That was fun. Than radioactive. There were those underage girls right in front of the dancing. That's DJ. the sketchy thing about Fremont Street is that there's no like age. There was limit. like teenagers. There's so many there. young people. I'm convinced around. that because you know you walk around either Fremont Street or the Main Strip, and there's all these girls in their, like, stereotypical Vegas get-up, yep. and you, you know, pay them to take a picture with you. I'm convinced those two girls that were standing in front of that dancing DJ stage were every minute of 16. Probably. They bought those at Goodwill. They stumbled across them, and they were like, hey, look, let's do this. Vegas is a weird town. It is a weird town. <laughs> Fremont Street was... Was it, more my speed though. Fremont Street to me was the uh, night version of Venice Beach, California. I just think it's funny that it's like you have Planet Earth, which is the Earth that we live on, right? And then there's the Strip, which I am not convinced is on the same Earth. <laughs> like the the new Strip, you mean? Right, the new Strip. Yep. And then it there's Fremont Street, place. which is also another planet outside of either of those two. <laughs> but they're right next to each other. But they're they're a, they're a they're, ten minute you, you Uber can somehow drive apart. take a lift to each one of those places. Right. A ten minute lift apart. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating to me. They were advertising. I, I, I really want to go back and try it. They were advertising. What do you like, want to try? <laughs> Twelve dollar prime rib. Oh, and oh. crab legs. Ooh, wow. When you were. I want to go back and try that. No, I'm all about that, but I thought you were talking about the other advertisements that we were seeing everywhere. Oh, there's that too. <laughs> he was like, I want to try it. I'm like, wait a second. Uh, <laughs> girls to your door. Yeah, uh, the, g- <laughs> delivered to you. $69. $99 two for one special. Two for one special. Any, if you anybody want that's been there has seen the hooker cards before. Yep, they, just, <laughs> they just hand them out. This is a thing, man. It is. It was interesting on Fremont Street seeing the. Actors, performers, street performers. Performers. yeah, street performers. I saw that there was that nun that I thought was like just because <laughs> we're somebody. walking up towards her and she's facing away from us in a full nun get up. And there are people in just costumes down there too, right? Just, and yeah, so I just it. I was like, she like standing in her little circle, like slinging, you know, we're sinners, we're going to hell. Like, is, is that what she's doing? And then she turns around and she's bare chested. She, no, she she's got duct pasties, tape right. she yeah, pasties yeah, on yeah. her nipples. That's it. I, I don't oh. know, didn't know what to make of that. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what statement you're trying to make, but you made it, I guess. She just wants people to take a picture with her. Yes. Give her five dollars. Yeah, that's weird too. Those people that the show girls that think you need to Yeah, hey, take a picture with me. Get your hand off me. <laughs> Did you see the one grab my arm? No, I, I had to do that. that. I had to do that. I was that's like, assault. Uh, that's assault. That's a, me too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a double standard. <laughs> I could do that to her. No, <laughs> it was it was a deal though. It was quite a place. And then we went, then after Fremont Street, we did Adam's favorite thing. My favorite thing, absolutely. 
five dollars <laughs> steak and eggs. So five ninety five. At the South Point, at the South Point, the uh, from what is it midnight to five a.m. Their little cafe in there has like crazy cheap prices on breakfast items, yep. basically. Yeah, and they had a four ninety five seven ounce New York strip and two two eggs, two eggs hash browns, two pieces of toast. I ate it two out of three nights that we were there. You can't afford not to if you're awake that And, like, I understand it. it, I went into it expecting a $5 steak, but I feel like I've paid more for less. Oh, yeah. As far as steak goes. Oh, yeah. No, I was happy with my bacon I was surprised at how not bad it was. I'm sure it's the same one they charge 17 for. Yeah, during during the the regular day. That's what blew my mind. We went in there later on. I was like, how much more can it possibly be, right? Like, maybe it's nine ninety five. No, it's like $17. Yeah. But the South Point so, was good. South Point was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think we enjoyed ourselves in the South Point. I think the... I think that's that's how you do Vegas. You you stay at the South Point or one of the other ones that were kind of around there because there was like the Silverton or whatever it was called that was not too far away. Yes and no. That are off the strip. Those are more reasonably priced. And then you Uber your way down to the strip and hang out. Unless you're getting wasted and partying and then th- you just cr- crawl your way back up to your room. I think I would stay at the Nugget. I wonder what the Nugget costs. Let me check it out. I don't think I'd stay on the new strip. I mean, maybe I would once, <sighs> but it's really... It's too busy. It's really busy, and there's not really anything I want to do over there. The dry... The, I, I'm so glad we didn't rent a car, because driving down there would have been a nightmare. No, I, don't I don't think, even think know we could have done it. You wouldn't have been able to. I don't think we could have done it, no. because I was so lost and confused the way that that those Lyft drivers were getting us in and out of places. Yeah, it was weird. Cause and I assume the, the weird thing was the, the multiple same s- entrances. Yeah, like the multiple stories. Yeah, there's multiple levels of... Road. Yeah. For it's like kind of weird. Term. Yeah. But I think I'd stay at the Nugget. I think that's where I'd stay. I wonder what that costs. Be in be. Old Vegas. That might be reasonably priced I bet enough. it is. Or at least one of the ones along the way. The Nugget, because that's like, that's like your your stereotypical Fremont, that's the one people know. So yeah, maybe yeah. that one might be a little more expensive than like the one next door the one that people don't know. Yeah. But maybe that's the area to stay. You might have a point there. Did you find any pricing of any kind? Uh, I'm one click. The away. South Point's pretty it was pretty affordable, less than a hundred bucks a night, if anybody's interested. So yeah, it is it's very affordable. Yes, yeah, it's it's reasonable. And you can park there for free if you Which drive or you get a car. Yeah. So not giving me prices. Not giving me prices. That's okay. I don't want to get too far into this. No worries. So, um, do you should we talk about Saturday? Saturday. Yes. Yep. Saturday was mostly SCCA day. I don't think we really did. We actually else. went to some of the classes. Michael seminars are the words. Michael is now a rally safety steward. I am. Road I need rally. My, I need my road paperwork. rally. Licensed yep. and accredited. I need my paperwork, but yes. So I turned in my paperwork. Stay tuned. Maybe. We'll see. I don't have time to like eat right now, but we'll see. We need to figure out the rally master part still. What do you mean? Don't we need a rally master? Yeah, but it's just a the guy. The SEC provides that. Well, it's just a guy. They they will provide it. It's right, just like sorry. it's it's just the guy that writes the rally. So if that's Adam, Adam's the so rally I, master. So I don't have to be accredited like the steward does, the safety guy? No. Actually you don't even have to be an SCCA member. Oh, sweet. Although the woman another lady in the Room was like, don't tell people that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I see your point. You probably shouldn't tell people that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the guy was pretty serious about like, yeah, the guy that does it needs to have done it before. But they but they said that they would send a guy, which is what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Is they'll send a, I assume probably a safety steward. It's, yeah, knows. somebody that's done it a handful of times. Right. That's, and they'll come and know what he's doing. I'm surprised everything. based on the pricing that they had talked about, which we don't need to get into on the show, but based on the pricing they talked about, I'm surprised that not more regions... Everybody Dude. should be doing it all the time. Yeah. It's so <laughs> cheap. It's the, such an the, easy way to drive funds. Yeah. It, you could tr- basically treat it like as your fundraiser. Yeah. It's the thing year. that makes money. <laughs> yeah. Hand Gar- over, hand like, over fist if you do it, makes right? Money. Yeah. And I think it's I think it really depends on who runs it though, because I don't know I don't know about gimmick rallies. I don't I don't know. I, that doesn't really no. appeal to me. I think that that's that's just a who markets it. Yeah, it absolutely. I can absolutely. see why you don't want to do it, but 
I feel if like, somebody like convinced if I me was, it was going to be fun, I'd, if I, I was going to do it with you guys, I don't want. I would do a TSD. If I was yes. bringing Katie, I think I'd want a gimmick rally because I think yeah. she would get into it more if it was that way, and I would still enjoy myself. I could be convinced to do a gimmick rally. And for those that don't know, that like the TSD is what Robbie and I did last year, and then the gimmick rally is like doing dumb stuff along the you way. You gotta like stop and take your picture by the yeah whatever Ronald yeah. McDonald, or and whatever. you still got instructions like how right. to get from place to yeah. place. And the other thing about the gimmick rally is you can't. There's rules about confusing people and like getting them super lost and yeah. stuff. You can't do that type of stuff. Yeah, you, but you could do that on a TSD. Yeah, you can use... It's supposed to be more introductory, novice-friendly, yes. I think. That's to bring people in, get them to do one, get their feet wet, and then do the more challenging one later. Yeah. I, and I you, can see where both have their place on the market. Yeah, you, can, you could over-complicate a TSD rally for a region, too. Like, if you're just doing a regional rally, you could totally <sighs> over-complicate that, and then people go, why the hell... Yeah, well, are we doing this? Yep. This is just not fun anymore because it's too complicated. No, yeah, if, you're, if everyone's getting lost, it's not fun. Anymore. But that's, there's guys that want to do like of almost anything. Ten day rallies, and the, yeah, they nation, are rally nation-long. people. That's what this. It's a sport now, and they want it to be the rules to a T. They figure out how far the or what fraction of percentage their odometer is off, so that they can adjust accordingly. Yep, they that's, have all, they have all the math for that. That's how hardcore those guys There's are. There's a full blown like spreadsheet. several page manual and spreadsheets and all like this stuff. Three hundred page. They were talking about so, which I I wouldn't be opposed to doing something no. like that at some point, but not anything that I would ever want to run. But I would like to I would like to try one maybe like a he, he was talking about doing in Vancouver I think yeah. or in BC or whatever. Um, I'd be interested to to see that because well, people take it really about, seriously. They were talking about like roads that you'll get on and you'll be on that road for 15 miles before you'll come to an intersection. Yeah. They're just curving roads that like go through these forests and mountains. I'm like, that sounds awesome. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be good. It's because Iowa fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but plus these, it's cold. These flash, it never stops raining where those are. Yeah. Ah, it's okay. I hate rain. I think I'd rather take I think I'd take snow over. I say that until I have days like this where I'm like, never again. This is the last one. This is it. Selling the house. Moving. So, so did that. You guys did some time we, attack. We went and did, I did two. We did two of the time TT attack stuff. Yeah. Yep. We did um, the, the, what do they call it? City hall where yep. people are just able to kind of free roll, ask questions yep. of the rule board. Which and went really well, in my opinion. Uh, as well one as person it. stated that that was the tamest city hall they've ever been to. Oh. Yes. Well, that's and I good. think that the main reason is because 90% of the people who are in that room had never competed in a TT. Okay. Because it's new. Sure. But, so. but yeah, even in that case, like you could tell there's a handful of road racer guys that just didn't quite get why people were doing it. Yeah. But even that, their questions weren't really in a, in like, why would we do this type of way? It was more of a, how do we make this work type of way? And that's, I think there were more, that was, I think there were some questions that sounded skeptical that was more like, I don't, this is not how we normally do it, so I'm not. I don't understand. Yeah, there was. Yeah, skepticism was probably right, but definitely not uh, like ill intent or like, where they're trying to kill it type stuff. There was some concern about the licensing and oh, the safety of having the safety of the licensing. Yeah, but yeah. We t- and we kind of talked about that with uh, Hayward on the other. Yeah, we don't the need a special get, show that we're going to talk. We about. won't get into that yeah. again. But just that was just when I walked into that it wasn't the town hall, but I think it was the, the intro first one that intro we did. to yep. Time Attack yep. or whatever. Yep, on Friday. Um, there was just some confusion. About that, which yeah. I, uh, that I understand because when people say licensing, like that sounds like a yeah big like you big gotta, deal. You got to earn it. And, yeah, so I get why there was questions about that. So yep. Um, then after that, I mean, Rabbi, uh we have to talk about the banquet. Oh yeah, because the banquet was fantastic. Uh, I don't know that I've ever done. I, I don't know that show. I've ever had any one particular thing that item that I've gotten more comment compliments on, with the exception of maybe the Omni. No. Than that stupid tie. The that best tie. Not a stupid tie. <laughs> the it was the best, best tie. tie. It you was the won. Best. It was by far and away my favorite part of my ensemble, if that makes you feel any better. Questions about it. Adam got. Where did that tie come from? Is it real? Is it real? The, Which amount, it, of ex- I mean, the amount of explaining I had to do. <laughs> unparalleled. No, no. It, it's, he he it's, counterfeited it. It's fake. It's real in the fact that it has a golf patch on it. How real? real? What define real? Did the yeah. golf corporation make, make it? The no. Tie? Do they no. make anything that says golf on it anymore? <laughs> Probably not. No. For the most part, no. 
Yeah, do they even make that patch? Probably not. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not going <laughs> to. Who knows where the patch came from? There uh, were some uh, really authentic vintage ones that I could have done, but really? I didn't yeah, want they're to. Probably, they money. were kind of expensive. Yeah, you're looking at $30 for a patch? No. Uh, so where where do I buy that tie? That was another one. Yeah. Uh, where's your belt? That was another. That was one. a great yeah, question. That. But that was great. From, that question. was for people on the inside. No, it wasn't. No, Normal other. people were like, you got to wear a belt with pants. Nobody, yeah, nobody who in. who wasn't on the inside at did or asked me about the belt. I don't believe that. There was hundred percent. There's at least one. No, I was there. They asked. No. Yeah. I pointed it out to a couple people. Too. Well, yeah, like, you, can't, not about. you can't point it out and then and then it count that. Yeah, that can't. doesn't count. Just, as you pointed just it out. And then the other one was, uh, why aren't you wearing a watch? That was a fair question too. Those were also people on the inside. Not not entirely true. I yes, asked some people. We t- I said, look, this guy over here is not wearing a watch. Again, you pointed it out. That doesn't count. <laughs> That's a good question. Why aren't you wearing a watch? <laughs> yeah, they see? probably weren't either. No, they were. I went to watch people. I like, guarantee oh, you there were guy. less people in, or more people not wearing watches than not wearing belts. Not wearing well, yes, a watch course. is probably- You were the only person not wearing a belt. The only one. Let's go with male, at least. Yes. You were the only male with dress pants on, because there was a man in a kilt, and he may not have been wearing a belt. I don't know. If I'd have known that was an option- you would there not have worn no a kilt in way. a billion no, years. Not. Yeah, exactly. I think they're actually Next like year. really annoying, aren't they? I will make you wear one Oh, I don't know. I think that they're kind of a deal. Like if you if you really go all out with the kilt life, I think they're kind of a deal, and I also think they're kind of expensive. We can get you a kilt, a dress kilt. I think it is expensive. No, I'll just wear what I wore this year, next year. No, because everyone's gonna recognize. You gotta change you gotta again. Change the it. fuck I do. <laughs> you actually can't go to another event wearing that outfit, but we'll get into that later. Watch it's me. Not, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's true. That's why I wanted to change my outfit up. Change it up. Change it up. Watch me. People were genuinely upset that he didn't wear a sport coat with us when we did the presentation. I know. We looked great. He was just wearing a t-shirt. I was on brand. No. When, yes. have, when, when have Robbie and I worn a sport coat in public? You probably wear them every day. That was the first time I don't time know I've what ever, you do every day. That was the day. first time I've ever worn a sport coat. Yeah, see? There you go. I don't know what you do with your life. You probably wear sport coats this on the regular. This is what I wore to, I'm wearing when I wore to work right now. That's nice. You probably yeah, wear a, just, a, just a button-up shirt and jeans. Just a button-up shirt. Like twice a week. Wear what? You probably wear sport coats like no, twice a week. No, not at work. On the formal events. I assume he goes to the formal events on weekends. Sorry, semi-formal. I assume he does that on weekends. No. He gets usually. together with his that's fancy friends. And they, they, no, that's what... No, that's, there's, that's no, a, there's no fancy friends here. They go, yeah, it's they, cold. They go to the country club. All the fancy and people leave. live somewhere else. They're snowbirds. Talk to girls in poodle skirts. I don't know. <laughs> poodle what skirts? What, what, is what, is this? what decade is this? <laughs> John Travolta going to come out of the Jeez. closet in a second? Oh, that no. Now, now we're getting sued. Not that kind of closet. It's not what I meant, John. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, man. South Park had some problems with that. That is, that yeah, is a is. South Park episode from back in the day. Yes. It's not what I meant, John. Or John's attorney. Or John's manager. He's got enough stuff to worry about. Got a new movie coming out about race cars. Jalop- cars. Jalopnik hates it, which means it's going to be great. It's kind of, probably, it, it looked all right. You got to take what you get. It didn't look that bad. Let's just all go watch it. I thought it looked all right. I think it looks fine. I think it looks like a perfectly reasonable movie. What was it called? John mm. Travolta does racing. I think that's what it's called. I know called. Shania Twain is in it, too. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Robbie's in now. Tra- trading paint is what it's called. I trading think paint. John Travolta woos her throughout the movie. It is a little... Like on the nose, it's stuck as a topic. It's called trading paint, father son dynamic. He goes to races with some other dude. Like I think his son leaves him because because his dad's washed up. Yeah, it's, and then his dad starts driving again to prove him wrong. Like I said, it's kind of a little bit, but it's fine. Formulaic. It's fine. Take what you can get. It's better than whatever Fast and the Furious is coming. Facts guaranteed. We watched a little bit of Fast Five this weekend. We did. It was. It was on TV. Worse than I remembered. Have you yeah. seen Fast Five previously? Yeah. The I heist have. one? Yeah. It's worse than I remember. We came in right when they get the Porsche, so I was instantly mad. <laughs> that was perfect. Time. Not oh, about the right. Porsche, but about the fact that they went to they a race. They skipped a race scene. Yeah, that's, they, they get there, and they're like, oh, yeah, let's race for pinks. And then they cut scene, and they cut back in, and they're pulling the Porsche to the garage. Yeah. That's where I lost the franchise. That exact moment in time that was it yeah that's where the dra- dragging the bank vault through the city and that was no after. they that lost was that was after that was I, I was i had already that's, checked that's out. where they lost me i had already the clocked vault. out the bank vault i was like that's it i'm done with this yep so anyway that was that ate up most of saturday i don't think we did really much after that no because i think we, that's yeah, when we gambled wasn't it we did some gambling yeah so we did yeah. Some, yeah, yeah we did the, went to the south point after the banquet 
Went to the Hall of Fame banquet and they inducted all the Hall of Famers. That was cool. And they there was stuff. some really interesting people in there. Yeah, I didn't realize how there's there's you could probably look up who to talk about, but yeah, there's one person on there. I'm like, you could be on the show and that would be great. There were more than one person well, one, I would have happily one, have one person to. specifically that's been yeah. on, he's on dinner with racers. Dorsey, like, I would have killed to talk to Dorsey Schrader. Gonna, I think we're gonna have to talk to him next year. We're gonna do a little better. I'm gonna make sure that there's no one on that Hall of Fame that I don't want to talk to. Yeah, well. I, saw I don't him, care and then I, if then we I saw he was on Dinner with Racers this week. I don't week. I care if we others. grab him oh. and talk to him in his hotel room. We're talking to that yeah, guy. Yeah, we need we need that show. Yeah, yeah. So it was super cool to kind of hear all the history of the people that are getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Um, seeing all the awards. It was really it was it was better than I expected because I was afraid it was going to be kind of dry and yeah. terrible. It was, but it was really good. I enjoyed the presentation. I enjoyed the the videos they showed of the history of those people and. It was really well put together. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm still the, feel like the outsider. Like, what are we doing here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Who are these nerds up in front <laughs> talking to all of us? Yeah, that, that I had that feeling. Like the There whole was time. a Formula One driver there. A guy there was. Who, he yeah. had podiumed on a Formula One in a Formula One race. And yes. Then there's and then we're there's the us. And we're the featured guest. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm not like, mad I, about no, it. No, no, please don't take this away from me, but I don't get it. What I appreciate have, it. What have we ever do to deserve that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I was pretty humbled like the whole weekend that we were given any sort of you know credit for anything that we've done. So it was just kind of cool to be there. Plus, we looked great in our... We looked, our, we looked very good. In our sport coats and suits. We did. We dressed up like the whole weekend. We did. I had a button-up shirt on Friday. I had a sport coat on Saturday. Suit Saturday night. I had a nice t-shirt on Sunday. But we had a great day on Sunday. We did. Porsche day. Yeah. It was Porsche day. So Migs from Drive Tribe uh, hooked us up with a couple of Porsche owners, local Porsche owners. Um, one of the guys is Dare Fascination. Der Fascination. Der. Um, it's a YouTube it's channel. Dare. It's Sherman. Oh. Oh. My oh. Bad. It's Dare. My bad. Um, you should know D-E-R. that. D-E-R. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he's got a YouTube channel um, about Porsches, and he had an old 930 that was pretty heavily patinaed, but it was really cool. And then uh, That's my favorite part about um, it. At first, I was like, I don't think I like this. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, I really like this. I really, really like this. <laughs> like, I would own this car over a lot of other Porsches because it's really not at all perfect. It's the Magnus Walker effect. Where it's perfectly not perfect. No, but as soon as he said patina, it clicked for me. I was like, okay, now I'm I, good. Yeah. Because it's like, and I know people are sick of this, but it's like watches. Like pat- old patinaed watches are cool yeah. as long as they're not trashed. Right. But patina's cool. And like just letting things be patinaed is cool. Making things patinaed is not cool. No, I, yeah. I, I'm curious. Welding wrenches and could, chains together no, to make things look t- old is not cool. That's, I, that's the extreme end of Even like purposely rusting your hood yeah not cool i'm not into that no uh, the the rat rod thing is is a whole nother step past that yeah definitely i'm i, I want to know the story of his porsche because i'm sure he knows how that hood got all the sw- the swirls yeah, on swirled, it yeah like it's like yeah it's like someone took a piece of sand like real like scotch bright scotch or bright to it and just yeah. swirled it just roughed it up and I, but i'm sure he didn't that was jp um it and makes glorious noises. Does it? Yeah, you got you, to ride it. Yeah, so I rode in the back seat, which was uh, an experience. Plenty of room. I could not put my head straight up. I had to sit kind of cockeyed. You look fine in this picture. It's not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what happened? So we so Migs took us to a Cars and Coffee. We went to the Cars and Coffee. We met JP and Buddha. And Buddha has a nine nine six C four S two thousand five. The last year. So obviously it's a nine nine six. So I got in the nine nine six. We threw Robbie in the back. That's fine. So that I could have as much nine nine six experience as I could from for no particular the passenger just, seat. Just because. Just because. Uh, not because I'm thinking about one. And then we put Adam in the nine thirty. Which as soon as we put you in there, I wondered if maybe I should have gone the nine thirty. Just because I don't know. Just like, no, like I fun. Don't, I I think I don't I don't think that it like it was fun. Like an old car is fun. Yeah. Like you would love that car for the same reasons you love your Fiat. Sure. It's it's 
flawed in the best of ways. Okay. It makes silly noises and uh, it probably doesn't shift the nicest. And, and oh, sure. uh, like <clears throat> it was fuel injected, so it probably ran better than like a carbureted car. But you know, it it sounds really good when you're when you're flat out, but like. I don't know that that's a comfortable car to be in. I don't know that that's like, a, I don't think that that car would fit what I think you're probably after for your Porsche experience. Damn. Yeah, I would agree with that. Without Even without riding I just it, to try I, it, I feel pretty confident. I guess I need two, two Porsches then. I think that's fair. I need, I need both of these Porsches. I don't think, I don't think that you would hop in that car on Monday morning and no, I think you might do it on Monday morning. I don't think you would <laughs> hop in that car on Wednesday morning and drive it to work. <clears throat> you might I'm drive with you it. On you one. might drive it on Monday morning because you need a pick me up. But that's on Wednesday. I'm annoyed. And I, or you I might, just, or you might in. drive it to work on Friday because it's Friday. But like, I don't think you'd hop into it in the middle of the week. You're gonna take the car that the comfortable one that's more comfortable. And I think the nine nine six, you might actually drive on a Wednesday. And I think I that's wouldn't I wouldn't disagree I with that. I think that's what you're after for your first Porsche experience. Maybe I'm wrong about that statement. But I think in the same way you don't necessarily like driving the Fiat. Yes, it's like that. It's like that. Okay. <clears throat> with an interior. See, the one that I drove was later than that one, and it was this was years ago, and I don't really remember all of it. And I was babying it because I didn't it was like not your car, here, drive this. Yeah. 1987 911 SC, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, the, I don't know. <laughs> didn't have as much driving experience as I have now, so I didn't, I don't think I appreciated it as much as I would have. Like, if I did it now, I think I'd drive it harder and kind of enjoy it. The way you drove it, I think that it might have a, because it had a, don't think, didn't originally come with like a 2.8? 2.7. 2.7, yeah. it has a 3.2 in it now, yep. I think is what he said. Yep. It's so like a board and stroked engine, and I assume that it's probably been bumped in compression a little, and it was kind of a, a hot little car, and, and I don't know that the clutch was exactly the most user-friendly clutch in the world and stuff probably like Probably not, like no. It, maybe a more standard 930 you might enjoy, but that particular car, while I think you would love that car, don't get me wrong, I don't know that that car would steer you towards Porsche ownership. However... However, the 996. I got to ride in Buddha's 996, which was quite excellent. Right up, right up your alley. Uh, which was all wheel drive, and he was trying to convince me to get an all wheel drive one. Is that what the four stands for? Yes. So the two is just rear wheel drive, and the four S. Trying to learn these things. Four. Right? So there's. So there's a two S. So there's just a. Yeah. So it, well, C two. C two. And then there's a C two S. And a C two S. Which they didn't make in the 996. Okay. And then there's a C four. And then there's a C four. I don't know if there's. I don't know if there's a C4 or is it and just a, a C4S or if there's just a C4S. Okay. That I don't know. So of. what's what's the difference, if we're talking on the twos, what's yes. the difference between a two and a 2S? Power output. Power, so they're strong. Options they're more powerful. Yes. Uh, but I don't think the, the 996. Is a wide body? No. But I think, the, I think when you talk about C2 and C2S, you're talking about 997s, not 6s. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Unless the, I haven't seen a Carrera S... 996. Maybe there is one, and if there is, they would be rare. But when you get to 997s, there's definitely a C2 and a C2S and a C4 and a C4S. So in the 996 world, what yes. do you have to get to get the turbo body kit? The wider... C4S like Buddha head. Okay. That's the only way to get it, other than a turbo. Without a turbo. Right, or a GT3. Right. Okay. So that he he bought that car because it is it's all wheel drive and it's all the turbo parts without the turbos. That's right. the idea of it. Did you see his license plate? It said Bertha. It's called Bertha. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Cuz she's got wide hips. She does have wide <laughs> hips. So, but that was that was enjoyable. So then we went to uh, JP's little studio thing where he does kind of his podcast and hangs out yeah, and yeah he's got a YouTube channel his YouTube yeah his YouTube channel he does some Porsche videos for hire too doesn't he, he does some yeah something. yeah he's he does some stuff he works with uh, Porsche Classic on some oh stuff. that's right yep. that's right yeah so um, check out his what his YouTube channel I really, watched like a Petrolicious style video I watched yep. one of them that he had talked about when we were, when I was driving with him he had mentioned one about I think it was even titled the Professor. I know. I remember specifically being able to read that in the, the thumbnail. Uh, I watched it. It's really good. 
Yeah, he's very deep. well produced, high quality video content. Yeah, he's a absolutely guy. worth checking out. Uh, and then they do a Cars and Cafe, I think is technically what it's called. Yep. Down yes. the street, it's like literally you come in. There's a coffee shop around the yeah, corner. If you go in the back side of his shop where the garage is, it's like right there. Yeah, nice, be, nice coffee like shop. A, Super cool to make it to that sometime. Yep. So then we walked down the street and we went to the diner. And had Vicky's? breakfast. Vicky's diner had breakfast. Apparently, that's a kind of Elvis a, is eating there. Yeah, like an oh really? Like, I an, missed old, that like part. an old school hot spot. It is the yep. oldest operating diner in the city. There you go. And Elvis is eating there. A bunch of video or movies have been shot there. TV shows have been shot there. Stuff like that. Probably people. <laughs> There's probably some people shot in the parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Old Vegas is revitalizing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's getting a, it's it much a, it's, better. It's, it's an up They're and call, They call it the art district. Yeah, which not, not the heroin district, the arts district. Right. Yes. Buddha said it's much better. He said he used to live there when he first moved there, and it was bad. That was and that was only like that, five years ago. That's the same yeah. thing that JP said when we were walking from his shop to Vicky's is like, even in the last like five years, that place has radically changed. Yeah, yeah. which is, is good. They're knocking down stuff and replacing buildings that are... In real bad shape. So he told us we walked by one of the buildings. He told us that that building was has the highest amount of police police traffic, traffic of any single building in the city. No, oh. that's where he stores his Porsches. Right, not that building, like, but next, like, to like, the, like, yeah, right. like a half a block like a, down the street. Yeah, like a <laughs> like a football throw away from there. Yeah, because he's got a nine nine three convertible too. That was super sick. That was a very nice looking car. Just really like they it. brought it to Radwood, L.A. Yeah, so it's just a good. It was just a really good looking car, and I don't like convertibles. Yeah, no, I typically agree. for some reason that thing was pretty cool. So it's a good yeah. looking car. And then cool. we had to go to the airport. Ugh. Stupid, good get on the airplane, come back here. It was four degrees, so that was that. that Not was fun. It. Nope. Robbie doesn't have heated back seats, but he has leather back seats. Oh uh, my god! <laughs> There's no reason so bad. <laughs> any human being should be at sixty degrees and then get on a plane and three hours later get out and it's zero, literally three degrees. Yeah, that was rough. It was the worst. I, so I almost you, went I, back in the airport. Yes. <laughs> have you send ha, me somewhere? Have you applied for jobs in Vegas yet? Is that a serious question? Yes. I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> God we can, damn, it's we cold can here. upgrade my computer. We could do this remote. I'm fine. Ah oh, man, it's cold. Seriously, yeah. Mike, hit me up. Yeah, this this, this sucks. We go from having a wonderful well, weekend the, the problem and then this is, week. The problem is, too, and we missed this because of our flight, but they're like, oh, we're going to drive the Porsche through the canyons. Yeah. And I'm like, Red, that's yeah, like go. all I want to do with my life right now. <laughs> it's like the only fucking thing I want to do with my life is get in a Porsche and drive through the can- some canyons. Red Rock or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. That's literally the only fucking thing I want to do. I've been thinking about it since. <laughs> Going back just to do that and then not booking a return ticket. <laughs> I got Sold. An, I got an email this week for forty nine dollar one way flights from Allegiant to Vegas. Oh my! Perfect. God. There it is. Oh my! God. Fifty bucks. <laughs> JP, I'll be back. It said one way only, and I was like, "So what are you gonna rate me on the way home? Yeah, or what are like you doing here? Five hundred dollars yeah. on the way back. Uh, uh, jokes on you, assholes! I'm, I'm not, not coming, coming back. back. Selling everything and buying a Porsche. Yes, yeah, just yeah, price don't matter. If you sell sale. all your stuff. Just have an estate sale. Just sell all the shit. Sell the house. Send me the money when it's done. Get the apartment by the Porsche. Love it. It's just that simple. There's engineering jobs there, I swear. Actually, there's some really it's good ones. I know. I there's looked them up. The construction jobs are nuts there. Yep. I don't think it'd be that hard for me to find a job there. Yeah, I, I can find a job anywhere in this country. The worst part was that I just Googled engineering jobs Vegas, and like the first four popped up was like aero, aerospace structures, test engineer. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> and then the dollar amount next Dream to Dream job. Ne- the dollar amount next to you go, oh. Oh. Ah, that's a lot of money. You mean I'm testing airplanes in the desert? Ah, that's all I want. <laughs> My dream job was always proving grounds, Arizona. Well, we're basically right, right there. there. <laughs> and they're hiring four engineers at that particular site. Turn it in. Turn it in, Robbie. Turn in your resume. I could, I could live there. I Turn could, it in. I, I probably, like, if I lived there, I probably would never go downtown, but I, I could do the I rest. I don't think that's the point. I think you hang out. There. I could live everywhere else in Vegas. The thing is, you could go to a Cars and Coffee in January. It's 60 degrees. Stand out in the sun with your friends, and it's fine. The only issue, and it's really, like, funny that it even gets to this, that's, like, there's no SCCATT out there. Like, the whole point of building the 240 <laughs> is, like, to do this race series, like, the mid the mid race series, and, like... So you'd have to go not, to California? Yeah, I'd have to, like, travel. How far is it, though? What? I think it's four or five hours to L.A. 
Yeah, but no, then it's, then it's like, that, isn't it? you, it's four hours to it LA and then it's four hours from anywhere else in fucking LA. Yeah, but what about ra- other racetracks in California? Oh, I, I, serious question. I don't know. A little further than that, probably. I think that, Is it any I think worse that than most, here? I think that most of the racetracks no, are not. between like LA and San Francisco is the problem. I think they're you all, you would have to go north. I think they're all, most of them are north of LA. Like Streets of Willow and, and, Thunder Hill and Sonoma and Laguna Seca. Those are all yeah. north. Laguna Seca is eight hours away. That would suck. Yeah. There's, uh, what is that, Spring Mountain? But that's a country club, and it's probably $11 billion a year to be Not a an member. Option, and, Not yeah, an and there is there is a Las Vegas racetrack of some kind, and they yep. do hold events there, but I don't know that it's yeah all the time. Yeah, this, just the Speedway, right? No, there's a there's a road. Las Vegas road course. I don't remember what it's called. God, what's, it's Thunder. No, that's not right. No, Thunder Hill is is in Cali. Why? It's up there by James. Yeah. What does this say? Road course. Las Vegas Speedway road course. I think that's there is a. It, I think there is, is, that, is, a, is that, Well, I think there is a Roval at the Speedway. Oh. Well, that's most Speedways <coughs> these day this day and age have Rovals. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Figure that out later. Do you really need a racetrack when you have canyons, canyons, canyons? No, that's the point, is I don't need any of that shit anymore. Is there a good drifting crew down there? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. I bet there is, actually. It's probably a great drift scene down there. Well, I like how J- JP, not JB, yeah. JP described Vegas as an island, because it's in the middle of the desert, and then there's like nothing for hundreds of miles. And Which, I, I didn't even, at that point, you could just, that. like, we could buy, we could live out our pre-runner dreams. Yeah, I could get a pre-runner. I think that's you the see key. how much this place sucks. You get I think it that's the key. Like, mm. forget organized track days, forget autocross, forget drifting. I can't, though, you do Build. other shit. I bought into the SECA. I'm, I'm into. I'm into my time trials. I bought into Dude, it. Dude, you could. Someone's got to make lifted suspension for a 240, right? No, that car would be gone. Nah, bro, you leave it exactly how it is. You just no. lift it up eight inches. No, nah. you're gonna. It's gonna put be some, a canyon. Put car. some knobby we're, tires we're going, on it. We're going canyon running. That would be fun. See, there that that car sorted. There is a drift crew. Mike can tell us about the drift people. Yes, and the road racing. Mike drifts. No, he doesn't. He has that RX8 that he competes with uh, Global Time Attack with. You're talking. Are we talking about two different? We're talking about two different people. Oh, okay. Two mics. I think the mic you're talking about lives in like Detroit or something like that. Nope, not true. Okay, I couldn't tell you either way. I have no idea. You don't pay attention to these people. <laughs> no, I, I can tell you where Jude That's okay. lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but I think that's it. Should we move on? Sure. Got some news items. Cadillac is doing a subscription again. Because it works so great. Robbie, Robbie was waiting. They're going to try it all over again. I was. They're like, you know what? We know what we did wrong. The best part is Drive used a photo of two cars that they don't make anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so It's hard not to. Uh so they think this time around that they've got it figured out. They're going to have more involvement at the dealer level. Yep. Which I sure. might help. Maybe. I don't know. I think it depends on your dealer. But I also don't yep. know that dealers... Do you think that dealers will want to do this? I was curious if they were being threatened by the Dealers Association. I think they are, 100%. So that's why I got smashed the first time, and they just didn't tell us that. I... If I was a dealer, I would not want to do this because I feel like you're... You need a whole different department. <clears throat> yeah, you're being forced to be more hands-on. No, you're you're fucked. If you're a dealer and everybody decides to go subscription, you're done. Pack it up. No more business. It's done. Yeah, then you're just a, a purveyor of cars. No, you're not even doing that. They're not... The, if if, well, I mean, if they go subscription... You're just a service place and a place to pick nope. up... They're not even doing that. If That's, if if this well, if yeah, they go yeah, subscription, service, do you think that they'll farm out service? If they're not selling cars anymore, do you think that they'll farm out service? Probably not. If the cars are being owned by Cadillac, why would they send it to somebody else to service it and pay them their markup? They'll just start servicing the cars. They'll have their own people okay, and set yeah, up their so, own okay. shops yeah, to yeah, service yeah. their cars. Right. Your dealerships are done. Uh, that's not going to happen overnight, though. No. No, but it if you can't make profit, like if you don't have the storefront to be able to make the to make money selling cars, 
the dealer's gone. Yes. So, and that's why they're trying. You don't think it would be easier for Cadillac to just give the dealership a cut and let them do the service and the exchanging of the people who's... I'm sure that's how they're going to sell it to the dealers. Like, well, even if this works, we're going through you anyway, so every time there's a subscription, you get a cut, and then all the service will be done at you know, your service station in the back. So like th- those guys will still have jobs. And then your sales guys are just going to be rental guys. rental guys now. I think that it would be in their best interest to follow Tesla's model because it's 2019 and... I don't think we need car dealers anymore. Yeah, not to the extent that you needed them twenty years ago. I do think you're still going to need like service departments, though. Right, but why not just do it in house? Yeah. Why are you paying them to do it? Why don't you just bring it in house and do it? It's going to be tough to overhaul that quickly. So. Yeah, without like completely destroying a lot of people's lives. Like if if Cadillac's just like, you know what? No more dealerships. That's ours now. But they do that all the time, though. They pull dealerships all the time. Yeah, Yeah. the dealership that I worked at got their Cadillac thing pulled in two. Maybe they are in it. There is, in my opinion, whatever the bailout was, they pulled. So I think they we were a Buick, Chevy, GMC, and Cadillac dealer. Yep. And I think they lost. Their Buick and Cadillac, and I think they got to keep their Chevy and GMC, but or maybe they just kept Chevy. Pontiac, they would have Pontiac, Pontiac was dead already. Oh wow, Pontiac was dead when I were or was dying when I worked okay. there. Oh yeah, okay, that was um, later than I thought. Or no, that happened all at the same time. You're right. They killed they killed Saturn. Yes, was, mm-hmm. but we didn't sell Saturns. Right. And then when the government bought the whole thing out, they killed Pontiac, and then they went through and decided based on sales figures, purely based on how many cars you sell, they cut people out. Oh, wow. So the dealership that I worked at, I had left there already. I was already like yeah. through college at that, because I think that was 08, wasn't it, when the bailout was? was yeah, 09. When we had the 08, recession. Yep. 2009. And I know they cut some, and they got to keep maybe Chevy. I know they kept Chevy and maybe GMC, and then they ended up closing doors a few years after that. Then they tried being like a Napa retailer and a used car lot, and now it's an empty building. Huh. Well, then. So they killed a lot of jobs when they did a yeah, lot of absolutely. that stuff. They, absolutely. You know, because I think they looked at it as they just looked at it purely by the numbers of cars you sold and not like the numbers of cars you sold per capita. Right. And they killed a lot of dealerships in small towns. Just killed them outright. Yep. You know, if you were just a Chevrolet dealership, you may have been the only Chevrolet dealership in a 30 or 40 mile radius, but they killed you because you don't, quote, sell enough cars. Yeah, cause, because... Well, the- now nobody's selling those cars. Yes. So, it was rough. <clears throat> so, this is called Book 2.0. It's probably just called Book, but, but yeah. you it know, was whatever. book before, apparently, which um, I don't remember it being called that. I don't remember it either. Or I actually. feel like I would have made fun of it. That marketing... stupid name. That marketing stuck well. Um... And basically what they've changed is that you can swap your car less. And it costs $1,800 a month. Which is, I think, what it costs before. I think so. We broke this down. It was way too much money. It seems too much money. Uh, and I don't think it's... In my eyes, it doesn't it doesn't work. But at the same time, there's people that rent for their whole lives, too. So, But I feel like it... And lease. Right. I, f- I feel like it has to be cheaper than a lease or I'm not going to do it. Well, I, th- I think the appeal of the first one was that you could swap the car. Well, you could still do it 18 times a year. Right. But I would it probably, if I had it, no, well, not now. No, it, it's still 18, uh, is the way I understood it, was that it, that they um, they weren't going to worry about that because no one was doing it 18 times anyways. Oh, I thought they were going to limit that because the I, number I think, of people, I th- I think, I thought, people weren't doing it oh, anyway. Unless, unless I misread it, I thought they said they were gonna, it was still at 18. But people aren't doing it, so it's not really a concern. It doesn't matter. Yeah, people were not swapping the cars as much as they... It's well, probably, it's probably not worth the hassle. Plus, well, if you can't get the car you want, you're not going to trade off the one you have. Unless right. you hate it. The only reason that, that it makes sense to me is if you travel a lot and you can pick up a car somewhere else. But then if you travel a lot, you're, you're not going to just... 
you're not gonna be able to do the 18 right right so then you're just getting a rental car and i bet you're still limited on miles you can't put like hundred thousand miles on it in a year and then give it back because you're a traveling sales guy or whatever you know yeah so what are the why are, how are they involving the dealership more you have to go through them they're like the they're the booking they're agent the go now. Between. they're booking agent good word they're the rental office they're the rental office they're glorified rental people so they're they're enterprise now yes and they might even pick you up mm, I don't know if they do or not I Did, didn't not. see that in the article <laughs> this all seems very not planned still out still well. seems very half baked and I yep. don't think it's going to work again and they're not doing it and you know what I want this to keep failing so that they'll <laughs> just quit it because I don't want it yeah I don't I don't know who does. That's the thing. Well, now Ford, Lincoln, and Jeep have ones. Oh. And Volvo, and Audi, BMW, Mercedes, so, well, who, Porsche. What's the, what's the company that has the used one? You can rent used ones. Um, Yeah, that was in here, but I don't I remember. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. But yeah, you could. That, that's, it's working well for another company using used cars, but I don't know. It, it, so, I, so, it's one of those things I'm surprised works and that there's that much demand. At okay, the same so, time, I think that kind of makes more sense because there's less money. They, right. They've made their money on that car. They made the sale. And they've got it back now. And they probably make more money on it as a subscription service than they will as a certified pre-owned. Yes. That kind of makes sense. That, that Yeah, and it probably costs $500. And it might be, yeah, it might be a more reasonable price because they don't have to make as much money on it. Because they sold the car once. Yeah, it, it could be two hundred dollars a month. And then I could see, like, if you just signed up for it, and you just use the car when you need the car. Like, you know, I could see people in New York, like, oh, I need a car for a week, so I'm just going to get a car for a week, and then you don't use it for, for a few month, months yeah. or whatever, you know. And then and and that's fine. But being like stuck it with it needs to be way cheaper if it's going to be that way. Yeah, but that's the point people. of the used car was that you just use it when you need it. You know, and if yeah. it's two hundred dollars a week, then that's fine. Versus you know eighteen hundred dollars a month, and you have to pay every month, and that like that's your car, like that's the car that you use every day. You think? Oh, you're you're saying that like I pay two hundred dollars when I'm using it. Yeah, but just I when don't you, when right. I'm not. Yeah, that's called renting a car. We do that already. You can go down to Enterprise or Budget. But you were saying they're doing it with used cars, though, right? Right. Yeah. But is I that how they're doing it? Or no, no I think I they're think, doing it the same way. I just think with you used pay cars. for it. I think you pay for it whether you're using it or not. Well, why wouldn't you just buy a used car then? No, you're that, yeah, I'm, a, I'm saying the same thing. Like, it just it's, that makes it seems strange to less me, but, sense to me. This makes some sense. That, like, there's those people that have to have like the brand new thing. Yes. So I can get the brand my head Cadillac. behind that a little bit. That somebody will pay a stupid amount of money, I think, so they can be that guy that's got the brand new thing all the time. Right. But on a used car, it makes zero sense to I me. I think on the used car, it makes more sense for the manufacturer. Right. Because they've already made their money on that car, and now this is a way to make more money on it longer than what they would if it was sold again as a pre-owned car. We're talking about stuff we don't have all the details on. Was, yeah. The, the car's not owned by the manufacturer, though, I'm assuming. It's owned by another company? I think so. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a manufacturer just instead of doing CPO, they're doing used cars. Or they're they're doing subscriptions. With their used cars. Well, CPO, the manufacturer, still doesn't own it. That's through the dealer. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln has a subscription service for used cars. So, so it is a manufacturer level. Allegedly. But what makes... you know what? So is that for people who want to look like they can afford a Lincoln but can't afford a Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe it's $100 a month and you can use a used Lincoln. See, then it makes sense. You know, if you, if you yeah, it's like you, let's say you live in New York and you use it, you know, you need it a couple of days a week. You just instead of renting a car, you just have a subscription. And you just show up and pick it up, or even a couple of days a month. Right. And and to me, I feel like all the rental places, unless you're, lo- you're unless you're only marketing to the exclusives, like the the Cadillacs, you know, the high end Mercedes stuff like that. What's going to stop Enterprise from just going? You know what? Two hundred fifty dollars a month. Have whatever car you want, any day you want. I think they'd be stupid kill, and kill the whole thing. I think they'd be stupid not to. Except that I think they buy a lot of those cars directly from the manufacturer at a discount. And yeah, if the you're, discount dries up, if you're trying to eat up my my market, I'm not going to give you that discount. Right. Or who's? Why wouldn't they just team up? 
Just let well, that's what they're doing. Well, that's what Jeep's doing. Are they? Jeep's teaming up with Avis. Oh, they're and letting Avis run the. That's kind of what they're good at. They're, they're, that's they're, literally they're, what they've been doing as idea. a company for however long they've been in business. Whereas Jeep has never done this before. Yeah, just just do a subscription service through a rental place. It's already set up. All you have to do is just yeah, give them the car. That's now, basically what they are, except it's longer term. Yeah, now it's like Netflix. You just take the money out every month, and I just show up when I need it's a like car. It's like the difference between hotels and apartments. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I'm still not sold on it because it doesn't make sense to me because that's just not what I'm even remotely interested in, but it probably makes perfect sense to somebody. I think it's a, I think it's a big city thing. Yeah. Probably. I, th- I think it might work better for a company like Mercedes where you could be like, I will give you a stupid amount of money every month if you guys just keep bring, bringing me new S-classes and SLs and stuff. I don't think it works for Cadillac because it... They have too small of a lineup. I just don't think the brand has enough like panache to be yeah, cool like that. You know, I could see somebody I, wanting the brand new Mercedes all the time. I can't really see somebody paying a whole shitload of money to have the brand new Cadillac all the time. I also think like with Mercedes, they have such a huge line. Yeah, you'd have so many things. Like you could put so many cars on there and then like if I know I have like a deal coming up where I want to be, you know, I'm going to my high school graduation. I, yeah, I need an SL that week. Yeah. And then the next week I've got the kids and we're going to wine country. Oh, well, then I need an E63 AMG. See, and I think that you could charge like an outrageous amount of money for that, like $3,500 a month. Well, consider- considering how much they're charging to lease a G-Wagon, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thirty four grand a month. I bet you could charge four grand a month and people would sign up for that. Yeah. You just have to make sure that you find that happy medium between getting enough uh, options that they can change out. Yeah, that uh, they're happy, but not having so many that you can't make any money or keep up. But you have to have too many cars sitting on the lots for those things. Yes, very true. All right, we talked about that for way yeah. too long. Uh, the new Ram has a thousand foot pounds of torque. <laughs> The heavy duty, for the record, not the not right. the not yeah, the, yeah. Oh, the fifteen hundred does no, it. No, this is bullshit. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck. Sorry, man. Oh, Hemi. <laughs> yes, it is the uh, the big boy. the Cummins Super Duty. But is that the thirty five hundred? Christ, no, the twenty five hundred. The twenty five HD also has it. Damn, it's insanity. It's complete and utter insanity. I need it, <laughs> but for at no the same reason. time, nobody needs that. I don't know, like. Remember when I said Ram was going to outsell Silverado? <laughs> it's coming. Guaranteed. It's, it's going right to be rough, here. man. Someone's going to be like, mine has a thousand <laughs> foot-pounds of torque. A thousand. A thousand. What's, What's yours got? It's got four digits, Nerd. motherfucker. Yeah, he's... yeah, Ram's going to sell the shit out of this. Yep. That's basically what that entire market is based upon. They're, I mean, they're selling... Like hotcakes already, but they're going to sell the living shit out it of these trucks. It is the best looking truck that's being made on them today. The Denali HD looks it's a good looking pretty truck. good, I yeah. think. Uh, they've been touting that up this week because it can tow 30,000 pounds. <laughs> but <laughs> no, guess what? Nobody needs without a license to that, throw that. No, absolutely not. It has to come to an end at some point. That is way too much shit for a regular person to be hauling I understand yeah, why... A 16-year-old can hop in the truck and drive that? Nah. It's not. I understand why... I mean, I don't know that I necessarily agree with it, but I understand why a 70-year-old man can retire and buy a Greyhound bus converted to a camper and drive it down the road, whereas if I was going to drive it for a Greyhound, I'd have to have a pretty high-level CDL. I kind of understand why that is that way, because if they required the commercial driver's license for the RV that would kill that industry. It would kill sales for I, sure. I get that. I don't know that I agree with it, but I get it. This is out of control. No one should be allowed to tow 30,000 pounds without training. Having, without training. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On the highways, let's, you know, cause I mean, like, let, you know, if, if you're pulling you know, back roads of wherever, like with the tractor, I don't, what, I don't agree with that statement in any way, shape or form. No, no, that, that never, that'll, that'll never, I work. know that'll never work, Ever. but, no one should be allowed to tow that kind of weight on a public road where other that, people that, are. I, I won't disagree with period. that part of it. But like, you, if yeah, you're, you're pulling not, around your yard, do whatever you want. No, the it's second secret. it leaves pu- private property and enters a public road, you need safe training for that oper- for the operation of that vehicle. Period. 
End of story. Well, I won't disagree with that. It's insanity. Because 30,000 pounds will kill a lot of people very quickly. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's, I see your point on that, but I'm going to have to raise you because this one, <laughs> this one will tow 35,000 pounds. <laughs> Good Lord. I, it's, you can pull like a bunch of skid loaders, like all of them. All of the skid All of the skid loaders you need and a backhoe. Yeah. It's crazy. So a subway car weighs 27,000 pounds. <laughs> This is a weird list I've I was going to say, that's things, strange. That, well, this, that was the most normal thing I could find, because my other options are jet fighter. I don't know what that means. <laughs> that's a large, mean that's a large airplane. Uh, spy satellite. That's Sputnik, a, I guess. Yeah. Sputnik weighs 27,000 no, pounds. Sputnik James weighed. might be able to tell you re- like what that is rel- Here, wait, relative to. Fighter spacecraft. I don't know that one. Is that for Space Force? That's for Space... Yep, you're that's right. Not, that's that's theoretical. Force. There's going to be a, um, a Netflix oh, TV show. A Greyhound that. bus weighs 40,000 pounds. There we go. Okay, yeah. So you shouldn't be able to tow a Greyhound bus. I know it's a little over, but you shouldn't be allowed to tow a Greyhound bus around with your Cummins Ram. That seems that's not okay. Yeah, that's that's a lot of weight. Yeah, but, and it just occurred to me: why would they use this picture of this Ram downtown, driving it like downtown, <laughs> it downtown be, somewhere for sure? It needs to be in the middle of Montana with yeah. thirty thousand pounds behind it. Yeah, it should have the the most god awful and atrocious horse trailer you've ever seen in your yes. life. By atrocious, you mean awesome? Well, yeah, but like. It should be three stories maybe? tall, yeah, and loud, fifty foot long, and have some insane tribal design scrawled all the way down the side of it. A medium sized missile weighs twenty six hundred pounds. <laughs> weighs what? Twenty six? Twenty six hundred? Oh well, you could tell that with the Genesis. Ooh, a large missile weighs thirty five hundred pounds. That's. I wonder what the difference is. Because, like, if you go to the Strategic Air Command Museum in uh, Omaha, yes, they have three missiles out front that are like ICBMs and they're three stories tall. Those are large missiles. Those are large. I, I don't, I bet you that weighs more than 3,500 pounds. Well, this list is bullshit then. <laughs> I think that an ICBM might be a, an extreme outlier in the missile world. A howitzer weighs 30, or wait, 16,000 pounds. So you pull two of them. You can pull two howitzers <laughs> with your ram. So the military needs like a bunch a of A bunch of rams, then, probably. Right? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. I'm sure that they're in on the ram 100%. I'm in on the ram. I'll say it. I like the ram. I like the ram. If I had a choice, I'd pick the ram. So we're talking about it anyway, so I'm going to say this real quickly. Go on. There was a prediction that I had that I had teased while you were talking about yours and then completely forgot to put in. Oh, really? Yes. Is this another prediction that's already come true and you're going to claim victory on again? No. Okay. In no way, shape, or form. (laughs) I was going to say that no matter how ugly the Silverado looks, it won't hurt sales more than 5%. Ooh. Because people keep buying it. They do keep buying it. They don't care. I bet they care. Look at the Prius. Those people don't care. That's a different people. That's a different kind of people. No, Truck right. people are pretty spent, proud people. So, yes, Monday I had I was doing some work in one of the West Des Moines um, apartment complexes right across the street from the mall. Yep. Like the most West Des Moines stereotypical place that could possibly exist, yeah. right? The number of trucks <laughs> in this apartment complex. There's many. With no hitches. None of them have it. Astounding. I'll bet it's three quarters. Gotta have a truck, man. Status symbol. It's upsetting. My, my avalanche is not a status symbol. <laughs> it's a necessity. <laughs> you bought a smaller truck to actually tow things with. There are people that buy huge trucks yeah, to the do big, nothing Yeah, the with. big diesels that they park in, that can't fit in their parking spot at their apartment. Yeah, no. Yeah. That, that's, a different, that's a totally different person. There was a couple of those buildings that have underground parking garages, and I'll bet you they're mostly empty. Yeah, they all have to sit outside. So, neither here nor there. French people. Ugh. <laughs> Jesus. That was very fast. That was a very fast reaction. I wasn't done yet. Let me finish. Oh. Hold on. Let oh. me finish the whole sentence. Jesus. French people. That was Pause. aggressive. Holy crap. Pause. French people. Ugh. Pause. <laughs> Let me finish. French people have destroyed more than half of the country's speed cameras. 60%. <laughs> 
When they rally behind a cause, man. What is with the French and setting things on fire? They really just, that's all they do. Maybe we need to set more yeah, things they, on fire. I think they're onto something. Yeah, we, we, as a culture, just take things lying down too much. I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I'm not going to go on this tangent because I feel like I'm going to be charged with inciting a riot. So we're just going <laughs> to... This can't go French anywhere people, but good. The French people. <laughs> French people? When they were... <laughs> there was a gas tax, and they were like, no, fuck that. And then they rioted. Yeah. And then they took out 60% of their... Uh, Traffic cameras, because that's a money maker for people driving cars. To be fair, they kind of do the things that like Americans say they will do. But they actually if this do happens, it. we'll fuck up, get, get, and that, none of it happens. The French do it. They're they like, do yeah, it. we're going to set some cars so, on fire. Like, that's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe we need to take a page out of their book. Wait, let me try to pronounce this group. Ooh, I can't. It's please. The, I tried. I love it when you, you do these you things. You just take letters out. So it's called the, the, the gelé jeune, I think is what it is. <laughs> Gerard. Can you, can you give us that gel, one more time? Gelé jeune. I think that's what it is. What is that? G.I. It Joe. looks like Gillette Juanez. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That's what it looks like. I know. I don't know what that means. Juanez, Juanez. If it that was Spanish, Spanish. If it was Spanish or, you know. Then it would be South gelé America, it'd Juanez. Be, Gelé one is. Maybe. That sounds way better. Gelé one is. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> is that racist? <laughs> no, I was trying to do French. <laughs> gelé, what did I say? Gelé, <laughs> gelé juan, the, juan. This? That's probably what it is. Gelé juané. Juané. Juané? Gelé juané. That's anyway, what, what are they? who are they? They wear yellow safety jackets and set stuff on fire. That's basically pro- protesters. Being, at they're least protesters. they're being safe about it. Yep. I have to wear a yellow safety jacket. Every, these, I wonder, if, are they reflective? Yes. Are they DOT approved? They say they're safety vests. They're, so they oh, well, they're French DOT approved. Well, then, I mean, at least they're being safe about it. So they're killing these cameras by spray painting them? Yes. Uh, smashing them? Yes. And... Uh, Burning them to the ground. It looks like the one you have <laughs> pictured here, the one off the article. I think they did all three of those things. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it does look painted, I think, smashed, I and think burned. they spray painted it, then smashed it with a hammer, then set it on fire. Yeah. It's they, obviously a money grab. The Because they lowered the speed limits. Yeah, so they put in the cameras. Oh, man. They, really? Yeah. I missed that part. Yeah. Put in the speed That's cameras and then took, took the speeds from 55 to 50. Yeah, it's a money grab. That's a That's why they're move. angry. Which is, yeah, so they, they add tax to the gas. They put in cameras that are total bullshit. And then, yeah, then people get mad and burn them to the ground. And rightfully so. But problem is, which I also thought was super weird, these cameras are on the ground. Yeah. That's strange. But they're building a 13-foot tall camera. There you go. They're building like 6,000 of them by 2020. And you know what they're going to do with that? Tall. They're going to climb Knock that pole. Over. They're going to climb yeah, that pole. Just, they're, well, they'll do that, or they'll just chainsaw it down. It's going to be like the goalposts at all these college yeah. football stadiums. It's if not going to If you win the big game, the goalposts got to come down. Yeah. It's Everybody not, knows it's, that. It's part not, of the tradition. This or if it's Visha, it. the light pole comes down. No, you got to take the goalpost down, and you got to walk it all the way to that- Lincoln Way. To Lincoln Way and throw it in that pond. That's what you do, Ravi. I'm sure they had several meetings. They're like, "We got this. We'll just make them taller." And it was like, yeah. "Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Unless they're levitating." Best idea we've ever had. We're gonna make them taller. Like that's gonna fix anything. Nope. They'll figure out how to it's set. It's just them gonna on make it still. more expensive. My favorite part is the cameras cost one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. No, they don't. Yes, they do. That's what it says. That might be what they're charging. That might be what they're to, paying. To put, but to that's put a brand not new one. What in. it yeah. costs. Yeah, I don't get that. The at money. All. That's an outrageous amount of money. I wonder if that's like even if you took the I wonder first if they're one like out. all tied like on a fiber optic network and that that hundred fourteen thousand dollars is like spread out over that entire construction project where they've laid fiber along the interstate and then had it spliced and then put oh, it in no, the cameras. No. That's not enough money for that. And that's how it, that's what it all cost. That would know, that'd be like millions of dollars spread out across all of these cameras. No, it it literally said a completely destroyed camera costs one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars to replace. That's insanity. You better hope that it doesn't catch you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have a mask when you're in front of well, the camera. The advantage of these is that they only look one direction. That is nice. That would be fix that problem. <laughs> not oh, let's put it on a no, pole. No, don't fix that. Let's put it on a Just pole. Just quit. It'll be fine. No, if you can't see what's attacking it, that you should start with that. <laughs> Spend God, that fourteen hundred and fourteen thousand dollars on cops instead. Put them in cars and put them on the roads. No, don't do that either. 
<laughs> Stop being no, because then you're wasting gas. You know how expensive that is. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, you put we put a tax on that shit. It's really expensive. <laughs> well, and and gas prices out there are outrageous. Yeah, like we complain are. we complain about gas prices. Yeah. Like it's it's like four it's times not, yeah, as much. Nothing there. here. They would right they would the literally tax. kill for our gas prices. There was an article about they're thinking about actually imposing significantly lower speed limits on the entire autobahn. Oh yeah, I saw that too. Because of gas consumption, it's it's a pollution and thing. pollution. They uh, the two things. Yeah, they uh, whoever's in charge in in Germany was like, yeah, no, killed it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that was why good it you. was kind of a non-starter, and that's why I left it. But, alone, it's, it but. yeah, it sounds like there's not a lot of unrestricted or, or uh, it's only unrestricted when there's correct traffic conditions which i think are and getting, even then it's getting not, hard and it's very short distances and i think the clear traffic conditions are rarer and rarer and rarer i think uh, too many humans, i think man. part of There's australia humans, still has uh, the unrestricted oh. autobahn you remember that i've talked about that that sounds way way awesome no no, no the, the australia that's next to germany oh, oh austria. austria oh yeah right austria that's because the, the kangaroo, can't type. The yeah, kangaroos can't. and shit oh i made the mountains boy oi fosters <laughs> They don't even drink that there. No, they don't. They hate it. <laughs> That's okay. Stella, Sorry. Stella's a really fancy beer here. It's trash beer It's there. trash beer there. It's like get drunk on a Subway beer there. <laughs> it literally is. That's tailgating I, crap. Seen, yeah, it is. It's like tailgating on a Subway beer. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Is that Stella? Yeah. Isn't that fancy? No. Getting a Stella fight? <laughs> That's like a natty light. Yeah, it is. It is like a natty <laughs> light over there. That's exactly what it is. It's all about that marketing, though, man. It's, 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 worked, it, it's worked well genius. for them here. It's worked really well for them here. Yeah. They charge a premium price for it. Yeah. Anywho, I think that's it. Uh, people Shut are, it down. How, how long is this podcast? Two hours. we got to stop. Yeah. yeah. i got to go to work. This is, and this, getting, is, this is now four podcasts and they're getting an extra, forward. And they're getting an extra one. Yeah, we're going to 30 minutes, so deal with it. <laughs> It'll never happen. Uh, we could record a two-hour podcast and split it into 30-minute segments and release it once a week. And that's that's okay how it. you get bigger downloads. That's the secret. Well, we could do it every week. We could we'd do have two work. a week, but we could, do, we could take one show, split it in half, do two a week. You know what? I don't want to do that many YouTube videos. So I don't no, want to put any that. more time into this. I'm not doing that. Nope. <laughs> you guys are lucky. <laughs> Catch you guys next week.